This is TNA, the new face of professional wrestling. Life is not a random series of events. We cannot control the capricious moods of Mother Nature or slow the hands of Father Time. But as dreamers, we can build legacies, create new worlds, forge indelible moments that echo through time. For a company on the precipice of greatness, tonight is one of those defining moments, a chance to show the world the dream has truly become reality. But it is also a night for individual dream chasers, men of courage and passion, mighty warriors who train and battle and dedicate their lives in an unyielding quest to create their own enduring legacy. The phenomenal AJ Styles could have been an Olympian, but his true passion burns in the ring. Tonight, he wants to show the world why he is considered the most amazing athlete on Earth. The alpha male, Monty Brown, played in two Super Bowls, but he left the gridiron to pursue a personal dream, one he's embraced since childhood. Jeff Hardy, the charismatic enigma, lives life like a rock star, but he cannot resist this stage because of the energy, the emotion, and an inner hunger still unsatisfied. And then, there's Jeff Jarrett, a champion in every organization he's been. He now defends the very same NWA championship belt won by such venerable legends as Lou Fez, Harley Race, Ric Flair, and the American dream, Dusty Rhodes. The stories are endless. Warriors, dreamers, men who have sacrificed everything for this chance at stardom. Tonight, boys will become men. Men will become warriors, and warriors will take great steps on the road to immortality. These are their faces. This is their moment. Tonight, a genesis is unfolding. A brave new world emerging. Welcome to the dawn of a new era in professional wrestling. And now, TNA Wrestling presents Victory Road. You are looking live at Universal Resorts, Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida. It's Sunday, November the 7th, 2004. The dream has become a reality. The new era in TNA has arrived. It's time for Victory Road. And hello once again, everyone, from ringside. Mike Tenay, joined by Don West, and we are so proud to welcome you to this epic Victory Road event, the first ever Sunday three-hour pay-per-view in TNA history. And Don, let's tell everybody what we have in store for them tonight. I'll tell you what, folks, it's a night of championships. It's a night of champions. So many great things. One of the matches you're going to see tonight is for the Tag Team Championship. You've heard BG James say he's the, they're going to be the next Champions of the world, three life crew. They gotta beat Team Canada to do that. Get ready for the three uncontrollable monsters to square off in that three-way no disqualification monsters ball match. Yes, it's going to be Raven, Abyss, and the alpha male Monty Brown, but Don, there is more. Well, you know what has made TNA so special? And that's the X Division. And folks, one of the matches in the world tonight, maybe one of the best in TNA X Division history, it's gonna be Petey Williams against the phenomenal AJ Styles. Can AJ win a fourth title? And how about the return matchup? 
This is the one that has been months in the making. It finally goes down tonight. NWA World Heavyweight title on the line. Jeff Jarrett and Jeff Hardy in a ladder match, Don. I'll tell you what, there's going to be so many other interesting things because Scott Hall and Kevin Nash have said they're going to be on the sides of each of them. Scott Hall with Jeff Jarrett. Kevin Nash with Jeff Hardy. It's going to be interesting to see what transpires. No question about that. Earlier today, we shot this very intriguing footage. It was a very cocky, it was a very confident NWA World's Heavyweight Champion, Jeff Jarrett, that arrived here at the arena at Universal Studios. Our broadcast colleague, Shane Douglas, was there to document it. There you see Shane Douglas, the limo outside the arena as Jeff Jarrett arrived here at Universal Studios for the match against Jeff Hardy. Jeff Jarrett, oh, yeah. Victory oh, Road. going to be <laughs> our biggest night in TNA history. Any last comments against your big title defense with Jeff Hardy this evening? Shane Douglas, no more than 10 minutes ago, I hung up the phone with Scott Hall, and he assured me of one thing, that Kevin Nash will not be here tonight at Victory Road. So you know what that means? The King is going to stay on top of his mountain. And there you see, as the camera pans up the ramp, a look at what's on display, the X Division Gauntlet Cup to be presented to the winner, the survivor of this every man for himself, 20 man reverse battle royal. And what better way to kick off the in-ring aspect of Victory Road than the spotlight, the No Limits X Division. I'll tell you what, Mike, you couldn't have said it better. This is what put TNA on the map, but you're getting ready to see 20 of the most phenomenal athletes in the world. But the problem with this moment is the first two, Kazarian and the next one we see, are going to have to survive all 18 of the other competitors if they want to win. We will start off with two competitors in the ring. Every 60 seconds, another wrestler added to the mix by a blind draw. You're eliminated by being thrown over the top rope and down to the arena floor once we've eliminated 18 and narrowed the field down to the final two, it's pinfall or it's submission to capture the cup. And then we're gonna start it off with Kazarian and Sanjay, two of the best the X Division has ever seen. Kazarian, a former X Division champion. And I'll tell you something, Kazarian is no stranger to this position by today. He has been in numerous gauntlets and it seems like every time you see it, he has to start out first. And that is a test to make it through the entire pack. Kazarian losing that qualifying match on impact to be placed as you see the flip one up by Sanjay Dutt with the next. Kazarian placing that very undesirable number one spot. He also has Chris Saban, who won a mini gauntlet. He will be placed in the highly coveted number 20 slot. Oh, and it is highly coveted for that simple fact. You're the last one in. Everybody's tired. Everybody has been going through everything with all the other opponents. And I'll tell you something, if you can, you want to be the last one in, but Ah! Be aware because you can get caught unawares and get thrown over that top rope and you see right there Kazarian hanging on for dear life! The former X Division title holder Kazarian who's been aligned with Michael Shane in recent months. They look to prove they're the best X Division tag team in the business today. Michael Shane also entered in the gauntlet. Depending upon when he draws in, it could present an interesting dynamic if Kazarian hasn't been eliminated at that point. And here comes Puma making his TNA pay-per-view debut from the New Japan Pro Wrestling Dojo. Original from the Philippines, Puma just 19 years of age, but he's already wrestled for five years as a pro. He's the youngest yes. wrestler in the gauntlet. As you see Sante Dutt showing his stuff, this guy is so exciting. Sante Dutt's somebody that I know will be a huge X Division champion because he's so quick. He's got so many moves, and that's what you need in the X Division. But you mentioned it. You mentioned Michael Shane coming in. His area and Michael Shane, if they're both doing it at the same time, will work together. I heard them talking about it. They said they would because it behooves them to work together if they can eliminate other competitors. Sanjay Dutt on the receiving end now of this double team move by Puma and Frankie Kazarian, the original player from the Himalayas. You're right, Don, he's established himself as one of the top stars of the X Division. This youngster, 21 years of age from Bombay, India, in trouble, but trying to stave off elimination. I'll tell you what, the last thing you want to do is get eliminated this early, but again, those guys have got to block out in their mind their task at hand. As they've got another, what, 17 minutes before all the competitors are going to look at this. Sanjay fighting for dear life with his nasty L.A. Park. The original La Parka of WCW fame renamed L.A. Park after a legal dispute. The chairman, as he was known in World Championship Wrestling for his skill at swinging the 
steel chair, making his return to TNA. And yes, LA Park has that steel chair in hand. As he brings it in and you see Kazarian cut, you see, ooh, Puma took a shot right there. Oh! You can hear that inside the net. You see oh. Kazarian went to cringe. But he didn't get thrown over the top rope, so he's not eliminated. Now La Park is setting up the chair to pose for the crowd here at Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida. Just on fire. What an incredible night, Mike. Today, the biggest night in TNA history. And there you see LaPark do the strikes. Park up the chairman, hits the ring with the steel chair. Bodies fly everywhere here in the 20 minutes. There he takes the initiative, though, right here while the park playing for some uh, playing for the crowd. Because there he goes right after him. And who's coming in? A local man. Jamel Park, the man of 630 fame. Six year pro from Florida. You're right. Yeah. Here's success in a number of independent organizations to gain this position with TNA. Mr. 630 for that 630 degree. Top rope splash. Great straightforward move back. How that hands stay crashing into Sanjay Dutt. I'll tell you what, showing off his athletic skills. That's what the extra is all about, but you gotta be careful. If you see right there, Puma trying to get Sanjay Dutt over the top of the rope. A little teamwork came in, but Sanjay able to fight his way back in. I want to point out that Sanjay Dutt, the feature in a sensational front page story in the Washington Post this past Friday. Great press for Sanjay Dutt and great media coverage for TNA as well. Nobody's been eliminated at this point, Professor, which is really kind of rare, especially when you've got this many people in the ring at one time. A lot of people might think in a moment that you might see 18 to 20 people in the ring. You almost never do because people get in the ring there's five or six wrestlers in there, and people start getting eliminated. Let's see who's next making the way through the tunnel. Oh, I see who it is. It's a member of TNA's Team Japan, Miyamoto, 25 years of age, three-year pro, trained at the All Japan Dojo. And much like the great Muda in his youth, Miyamoto has moved to the U.S. from the Orient for an extended stay to learn a different style of wrestling. I mean, look what we've already seen right now. We've seen L.A. Park. From uh, Mexico, we got Miyamoto from Japan, we got the play up from the Himalaya. I mean, it is such an international flavor going on right now in the garden, and that's what it's all about the X Division. All the greatest stars in the world want to showcase their talent to TNA because TNA lets them showcase their talent. Terrell Clark able to fight off Puma, headed to the top. Oh, be the six oh my eight. gosh, folks, look out for this! This is unreal! And he hits it! Missile! 630 connects. You gotta have eyes in the back of your head right now. I'm gonna tell you that because it's absolutely crazy in that ring. Countdown clock indicates that we need another competitor. Uh oh! Oh! Talk about interesting. Kazarian still alive in the gauntlet. Here comes his tag team partner, the cousin of Shawn Michaels, Michael Shane. And nobody in the expedition works together like these two as they show you from the start. That combination move that they use. Extreme domination is what they call it, and they hit it on Puma, and, and Puma's gone! Power, elimination number one. Puma is gone! Uh-oh, there goes Jarrell Clark, eliminated by Shane and Kazarian as well. Look at the teamwork! That's two in a row! This makes three in a row! Shane and Kazarian come in, and they have completely wiped them out as only Sanjay Dutt and then they park the left. You talk about teamwork. We mentioned that they're out to prove that they are the best X Division team. I mean, this bump is supposed to be every man for himself, but Shane and Kazarian working together to eliminate three wrestlers right off the top. You see the right right there by Michael Shane. Who's coming in next? Oh, man! The captain from Team Mexico! He is Hector Garza! This is the return of Team Mexico's captain, the success of the World X Cup. It made him a natural choice to be a part of this gauntlet. The 11 year pro from Monterey is in the ring. On the attack, Garza squares off and pairs off with Shane. Little teamwork here in the Luchadors as Garza and LA Park team up against Shane and Kazarian. Oh, Sanjay Dutt, did you see that athletic move by Sanjay? And then Garza just rubs him with the clothesline. Get some kick and just brutal in there. Almost as if you need eyes in the back of your head under these conditions. Oh, absolutely. Hit the guard by somebody I want you to keep your eye on. This guy has so much talent in the ring. It's been a long time since we've seen him. But remember how valuable he was in all those America's X Cups and the World X Cups that we had here at TNA. He was so good that the crowd, no matter where they were from, got behind him. We see that L.A. Park and Garza, the two luchadors from Mexico, 
Mexico working as a team. Shayna Kazarian in as well as Sanjay. Who's next? Oh, there he is, also from Team Japan, Nasawa. The captain of Team Japan that has competed in the X Cup action, Nasawa back, not just limited to wrestling in Japan, but Nasawa also competing for several years as a pro in Mexico. Oh, what a great move there by Nasawa as he takes down Hector Garza. Look at that, the kick in the back of the head of Garza. But oh, he should have watched out because there comes L.A. Park. A shining wizard variation by Nasawa on Garza. Follow up then Jagiri and then a spin kick by L.A. Park takes down the team. Japan, Captain Nosawa. Again, though, keep your eye on Michael Shane and Kazaria. These guys probably work together, but they're the biggest exodus in the world as they're now trying to get Sanjay down over. But Hector Garza actually helps Sanjay out as he comes in and kicks both Michael Shane and Kazarian. Garza and Sanjay Garza and Kazarian in the same match. Garza and Sanjay Garza and Kazarian in the same match. So impressive since coming into this gauntlet. You see Michael Shane, bottom of your screen, and Sanjay down top of the screen. Now the close-up look at L.A. Park and Nosawa. Keep your eye on Tracy, too. Somebody came down, of course, with Michael Shane. And who's coming in next? Mikey Fax. Another great young athlete that we've got to experience here at TNA. This kid's got a great future ahead of him. Like 20 years of age, the two-year pro from New Haven. Oh, what a move. Penner type move, back speed, follow up, and a carry kick, just drill Kazarian in the back of the head. I'll tell you what, it's always great when you come in there because you know everybody else is tired and you're fresh. But it can end very quickly as you saw Michael Shane there with a great counter. Great release throw that time by Shane on Mikey Bats as the countdown clock goes under 30 seconds. Now you see L.A. Park and Mikey Bats working as a team. They double up on Michael Shane before Nasawa comes in to help out from behind. Again, right now, as far as I can recollect, only Puma, Jarrell Park, and Miyamoto have been eliminated as the ring is starting to get crowded and cluttered as it's going to get confusing in there. That's what I show on my scorecard. Three down, Puma, Jarrell Park, and Miyamoto, all courtesy of Shane and Kazaria. Well, we knew they would work so good as a team, and coming in next... Oh, another up and summer here in TNA. One of the young lions of TNA, a totally different in-ring style than any of the other X Division members. Alex Shelley, so heavily influenced by the countless hours of videotape study, relying on a very European-type style in general, in particular, British-type ground game from Alex Shelley. Oh, absolutely. This is the guy who's I'm interested to see how the ground game works on this. Wait a minute. Did he get Sanjay done? Look at Sanjay done to work his way back in. Is he firing it out? Alex Shelley took advantage of it and kicked Sanjay down to the curb. Big drop kick that time by Shelley, and you're right. Sanjay's down, and Sanjay's out. L.A. Park is gone. L.A. Park on the opposite side of the six-sided ring. He is eliminated. Well, I got to try to keep score on this, and it just happened so fast. Sanjay Dutt, which again proves how hard it is to last from the beginning to the end. As Sanjay was getting the future started, he hasn't been able to do it. Kazarian is still out there. Let's see who's next up. It's Matt Seidel, returning to TNA, just 21 years of age, four-year pro. Matt Seidel from St. Louis, who's appeared on Explosion Impact, and yes, TNA paid for views in the past, and how about that?
that he brings to the X Division, and Siaki did exploit it in eliminating Masala, the Team Japan captain. Sonny Siaki is somebody that we've seen from the beginning of TNA when, when he was a member of the Absolutely an incredible tag team. This guy has stayed, and you have said he's just gotten stronger. Wow! Hector Garza sent Mikey back over the top. Garza used his leg strength that time to elevate Mikey Bats up and over and down to the arena floor here at Universal Studios. Mikey Bats eliminated. Wow, here's somebody who is so close to being an X Division champion, Jason Braun. Twice he went for the title, twice he came just a little bit short. You know he wants to win this moment. Look at that move by Jason Cross, that's unreal. Tilt a little hit scissors that time by Cross on Ziyagi. Stops off the Hurricane Rana, you know, standout performances for many of the NWA's regional groups for Jason Cross. Gains him a national fight with TNA. Side down, I wish move did not connect. There's a close line turned him inside out. One thing that's interesting is we're getting over halfway through the list. Kazarian is still in the ring. That is unbelievable. And look at him. He's just showing so much, so much determination as he's got the boot in Hector Garza's neck. He knows Garza's somebody that he's got to eliminate. Oh, think back to the previous conference, and even when Kazarian was in that number one position, think about how long he was able to last. Really an Iron Man. I asked him how he does it. He says you've got to find time for you to take a break. Let action happen elsewhere and catch a breath. Here comes the cult favorite from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Here comes Shark Boy as of late, teaming with D-Ray 3000, who's also scheduled for the gauntlet. Wow, that would be interesting to see how they work together as they are a tag team. Shark Boy and D-Ray 3000. Shark Boy and the crowd loves them. This guy, like you said, the cult favorite, he's so exciting. It's almost like a little superhero. Jason Cross hanging wow. upside down out over the ropes. I still see out of camera range. Alex Shelley still on the arena floor out here, but he's been out on the floor for an awful long time. He is, and he's hurt pretty bad, and I don't know what they're going to do. He hasn't moved for like three, four minutes down there. Just hasn't moved from that spot. He is in massive pain. Somehow Seidel was able to stay in. He was so close to being eliminated. And Seidel connects with the move on Jason Cross while Siaki able to make a right hand. Hector right Garza on the right hand side of your screen. Seidel in trouble. Can Cross eliminate him? Seidel going to go. Watch Shelly. Oh, Alex Shelly was playing possum the entire time. He was time. playing possum. Look at that. And then doing jumping jacks. Fading an injury that time was Alex Shelly. And he was the driving force behind eliminating Matt Seidel. And here comes Psychosis the former WCW Cruiserweight champ. Oh, here he is, and this is the guy to keep your eye on. So talented, so much experience. Again, I remember him from the first couple of pay-per-views. This guy was in the original Expedition Shootout. You're right, over two years ago in that double elimination matchup when we crowned AJ Styles as our very first Expedition champion. You see right there, Garza is still in there. Sonny Siak is still in there. Jason Cross, Alex Shelley, though, what a move. Not only was he playing possum down on the ground, he was getting a breather. Think about that, he's almost like fresh again. Oh, Michael Shane holding on for dear life. Tracy trying to get him back in, and she does. Yeah, if it wasn't so blatantly ill, we could almost have to appreciate the strategy employed by Alex Shelley to take that much time off of the clock, Don. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, as you can see right there, Shark Boy. Michael Shane barely survived. Shark Boy putting the boots to psychosis. Michael Shane is well. Well, here comes D-Ray. So now we're going to see D-Ray and Shark Boy in at the same time. And check this out, the tag partners. Little battering ram here with the afro. The little oh, yeah. afro ram. As you can see, they do it again. I mean, look at this. Great teamwork right there. And he's catching everybody. But again, unless you take him over the top rope, it doesn't matter. Mid-ring, Jason Cross, the exchange with D-Ray. Follow up with Alex Shelley's series of rights. Let's watch the partners. They're elevated. Oh, the oh, they're both holding on for dear life. They're still in. Dear they're still surviving. Oh, look at that. There they are. Congratulating themselves as they stay in. Hey, wait a minute. Kazarian did oh wait, Sonny Siaki just took them both out. Double clothesline. Siaki charges at both Sharp Boy and D-Ray. Sends them down to the floor. They're both eliminated. Sonny Siaki, what a power move. You see Psychosis, wow, spinning Jason Cross around and Hector Garza made him pay. Teamwork from the Luchadors there, that giant swing type move with Garza connecting with the dropkick. Who's up next? Oh, another former X Division champion. One of my favorites, the Amazing Red. 
Who in New York via San Juan, Puerto Rico is amazing. Red, one of the biggest parts in the business. Started in professional wrestling at 16 years of age. A six-year pro, trained by Mikey Whitbrook, and you like another former X Division champ. Alex Shelley is out. Well, when you do a high-risk move like that, it's only like that was the smartest thing. He would have been eliminated if he hit the floor. You're right. Good thinking on his part to keep his balance. Kazarian is still in here, guys. I don't know how he's doing it. I'm telling you, this guy is an amazing athlete. And you can see him trying to catch a breath. But that's exactly you see him and Spike and James are both the floor. Spike Former WWE competitor just made his surprise debut recently in TNA. Wrestles internationally as well for Zero One in the Orient. And check this out. These are the two former training partners, Michael Shane and Spanky from the TWA from the Texas Wrestling Academy, and they are battling it out. Wow, great move right there by Spanky. Now he's going after Kazarian, but Kazarian levels him. Spanky and Michael Shane have had heat for years. There you see Kazarian trying to eliminate Spanky, but he was able to land on the eighth, and he's still in. Well, you've got to be so sharp and so quick and get on top of those ropes and keep from going over. Wow, there's Spanky showing. Showing his athleticism and it cost him. Super kick by Michael Shane was on target. And I'll tell you what, that spit Michael Shane too as he hit the man. As you see Psychosis, lovely Kazarian. I still don't know how Kazarian is lasting this long. Tracy from ringside cheering on both of her men. There's one of them, Michael Shane. The other is Kazarian. They're both still in the battle here in the gauntlet. Well, this is oh. one that we knew. This is number 20, the former two-time X Division champ. He earned his highly coveted number 20 slot on Impact recently. Held the X Division title for a total of six months in 2003 and looked pretty safe. This cleaning house and then man! Unbelievable as he finishes the DDT right there on the top of his area. And I'm gonna tell you something. This guy has got so much potential like the name. Two-time X Division champion is Chris Saban. One of the best the X Division has ever seen. Spanky and Saban, a double team move on Siaki. Siaki able to break through that. Attempted a double close line. The open hand slaps on Siaki. Siaki's got a great advantage here because of the spring, but holy, oh, tried to kick him in the road, but they couldn't do it. Went for the double Wait a minute. They just continued forward before he could take the ground. Didn't think we'd see that. Siaki being overpowered, sent down to the arena floor and eliminated from the match. I mean, I just got done saying I thought Siaki had a big advantage in this match. Well, it doesn't matter now as he's eliminated. Red in trouble. Jason Cross trying to eliminate him. Then Red comes back. Drill that kick right into the chest and stomach of Jason Cross. We just see Spanky up on the shoulders of Michael Shane. Oh! Spanky eliminates Michael Shane! What a great counter by Spanky! Spanky! It looked like Michael Shane had him. Spanky able to hang on He's and survive. You're right while eliminating his longtime rival, Michael Shane. Well, the Kazarian's back by himself down in the ring. He can't look for any help there. It's an all for one and one for all right now. It's all the competitors are in. And when they get down to two, it'll be pinned by a submission. While Spanky goes for Kazarian. Kazarian in a very bad spot. Precarious position is what that's called. Look at this. Everybody looks like they're turning their attention. They're all turning their attention to Kazarian. He was the first man in the gauntlet. He still survived. You ready for the tower of doom? Oh, look at the pyramid of doom right there. The tower of doom. You gotta be kidding me. Tower of doom. Superplex. They're going nuts at Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida for this X Division gauntlet. And can you blame them? Are you kidding me? What else? You know, what a great spin kick there by Psychosis. Jason Cross, another one still in there as he's going after Psychosis, but look at Psychosis land on his feet. Fights off the power bomb, does Psychosis. Wow. And then able to reverse it and power cross down with the inverted DDT. Oh. Psychosis close line, Jason Cross is out. Well, Jason Cross was cross. just dizzy. He was spinning with his head at the mat like there. He, he didn't have a prayer at that point. Short arm close line, Psychosis. Drops, amazing red. Far side of the screen, you see Spanky and Saban battling. Attempted the suplexes, fought off by red. Psychosis tried to take it up into the air. Red kick right into the midsection. Psychosis charges in, oh, even land on the apron, but then the kick drops him down to the floor. Psychosis is out. Amazing red, great, great 
maneuvering right there as he's so quick. And with it, Kazarian, with it, to the Mason Red, get rid of Kazarian, no, Kazarian hates on somehow. Wow, oh, Amazing Red, is he going? Yes, Amazing Red's gone. Just when it looked like Kazarian was going to be eliminated by Red, the tables were turned. Red's out, courtesy of Kazarian, who else is still in? Uh-oh, Stanley went, went for that sliced bread number two, oh, and he was taken out by Saban. I'll tell you what, we're down right now to Hector Garza. Kazarian and Chris Saban, I cannot believe Kazarian has lasted this long. It would be an unbelievable feat if he were to win this. 17 down, three to go. Remember, when we get to the final two, it's pinfall or submission, high risk Kazarian. Wow, look at the strength of Chris Saban as he just threw him all the way across the ring. Good God, release German off the top. What a super flex that was. Unbelievable as the crowd appreciates the action out there. The ring is unreal. All three men in trouble. Who's going to be the first to get to their feet as we take a replay look? Watch Kazarian go high risk. Look how quick the Chris Saban got up there. And man, threw him right into Garza. We come back live. Keep your eye on Saban. Springboard. Wow, and he catches the kick into Kazarian. Is he in? Oh, my gosh. How is he hanging on? Again, the first man in is still alive. Once we get down to the final three, you see Saban connect with the kick on Garza. Kazarian has been almost eliminated about 17 times. And he somehow stayed in, and Chris Saban, the guy who had the advantage. Oh, Garza got him! Hector Garza got him! It's now down the pinfall and submission. Powerful drop kick by Garza. Eliminates Saban, who is wrestler number 20. And now we are down to the final two. Wrestler number one, Kazarian. Still amazed that he survived this long to face the captain from Team Mexico, Hector Garza, pin ball submission to decide who's going to walk away with the gauntlet cup. Oh, look at this, Hector Garza, Kazaria, these two have lasted so long. Kazaria longer than anybody, but you know what? Garza's been in there only a few minutes shorter. At this point, I think they're equally tired. They're in such good shape. I don't think it really matters at this point. Mike. Great leg sweep by Kazarian. The fall off the Great is to spring off the middle rope. Off the leg drop. Here's the cover. Here's the two count before Garza is able to roll the shoulder. Unbelievable how these Warriors have lasted to this point. Now, they've got to change their mindset. It's not about getting somebody over the top rope now. And you know what? It's probably hard to do. you got to realize, I've got a pity. We'll make him submit, or this thing's not over. You know, Garza is known for this tornado, this corkscrew moonsault type move as he heads to the top. Could this be it? Look at this thing! Of, wow! No! Step! Beautiful oh, moonsault! Oh, so no! no he didn't get it, but was that a thing of beauty? Kazarian's still in there. there! Kazarian still has a chance to win this ball, and it's amazing. Oh, if we could see that backwards moonsault again, if there's a chance, I don't know, it was awesome. You see the awesome. ovation by Garza? It was just... Oh, man, it was just such a thing of beauty. But right now, the action's back in. We can't stop, folks. And look at that guard's a smart move. Very smart. Hooks the top rope, able to elevate Kazarian up, Elev elevating him to the apron, but then Kazarian stops. Slingshot in, what single a, arm DDT. He's got to be in near leg one, hook. Two, Garza fights it off. Look at the pain on Kazarian's face. He wanted it over so bad. I don't know how much more he's got left. Garza slowly making his way up on the far side of the ring. Now Kazarian gets to his feet. Both men are up to the vertical base. Nice goal behind by Kazarian. Roll up attempt. Garza rolls through and then just drill in the back of the head with a drop kick. What a kick right there. I mean, the power of Hector Garza. Him and Sun Siaki, obviously, probably the two strongest men in this gauntlet. But obviously, the most versatile has been Kazarian because he has outlasted everything. Could this be the tornado right here? Perched up on top, watch the balancing move. Oh, but he that missed was it. it! That he was it. it! He went for the corkscrew moonsault, caught nothing but canvas. One, side roll, one, reversal. Two. Did he do it? Garza did it. He stuck it in there somehow. Hector Garza is the winner of the 20 man invitational international gauntlet. Hector Garza wins the cup, Don. Oh, what an effort. Hector Garza making his return to TNA. And what a return it is! He doesn't just make it back! He wins the cup here at the 20-man gauntlet! A guy who has been through so many wars in the X Division here in all those Ultimate X Cups. There you see the presentation. 
made by referee Andrew Thomas to the winner of the gauntlet, Hector Garza, and you're right. What a great way to come back to TNA. Hector Garza with the victory. I'd love to hear Hector Garza's thoughts about this win in the gauntlet. We've got our Spanish broadcast crew, Armando Quintero and Moody Jack standing by with Hector Garza. We're gonna find out what it was like for Garza to come back to TNA at Victory Road and to win the gauntlet. Let's go to Armando and Moody Jack. Thank you, Mike. Hector, congratulations. How do you feel coming back to TNA and winning the gauntlet? Felicitaciones. ¿Cómo te sientes haber regresado a TNA y haber ganado esta ruleta? Mira, más que todo, primero, feliz. Feliz por regresar otra vez aquí a TNA, la empresa que me ha abierto las puertas. Y, a, y haber ganado este torneo, este torneo que significa mucho para mí y para abrirme las puertas aquí en Estados Unidos. Y también a toda la gente hispana que siempre ha apoyado a TNA. Los invito a que nos sigan apoyando. Hector Garza says he's extremely happy to be back in TNA, that he is so happy to win this international invitational gauntlet and he appreciates the support of all of the Hispanic fans that are backing Hector Garza and supporting TNA. Congratulations, felicitaciones. Gracias, gracias, Armando. Sensational return for Garza to TNA. The campaign trail, it ends tonight in the race for the director of authority. Now let's hear from the American dream, Dusty Rhodes. For the past 30 years, the American dream, Dusty Rhodes, has stood for what is right about wrestling. He stands for tradition, and he knows what it takes to get the job done. With the will of the people on his side, together, we can make for a better total nonstop action wrestling. Led by a man with the experience, the knowledge, and the understanding to get the job done. So come Victory Road, Sunday, November 7th, vote the American dream, Dusty Rhodes for your Director of Authority. I'm Dusty Rhodes and I approve this message. DOA Decision 2004 is brought to you by Backyard Wrestling 2. There goes the neighborhood coming soon for PS2 and Xbox. And right now you see the numbers before you. The American Dream Dusty Rhodes and the current DOA Vince Russo. It's been about a 10 point difference all day long. The polls opened at 12.01 a.m. Of course, Vince Russo has carried New York. Dusty Rhodes has carried Texas. And as of right now, it looks like their home states, the peach state of Georgia, is neck and neck between Russo and Dusty Rhodes. Breaking news. Is she new? Hang on one second. We're getting news that there has been a web server breakdown in Stanford, Connecticut. How is that going to impact the voting about who's going to be DOA here in TNA? But we've got eight man tag team action coming up and for the eight are with us right now. Cal Kid Cash and Dallas and the Naturals and men tonight could be your night to get back in the tag team title hunt. That's, that's right. Scotty not so hardy. Is that skull mullet messing your brain up or have you just lost your mind? You're turning your back on the KID? Ah, I don't think so. What would these boys, these rookies, have to say about anything? I'm the 15-year veteran, and tonight I'm going to be the leader of this little clique here, this little tag team that we got. Because you know why? You know why, Scotty? Because I've been a world champion every place I've ever been. And not let me tell you something, it don't matter if we're here in TNA, it don't matter where it is. I'm the greatest of all time. And tonight, all of you are gonna be listening to what I say. You got it? Get it? Good. There's no time like the present, men. Let's get to the ring for eight-man tag team action. I want to remind you that the polls will remain open until 10 p.m. Eastern tonight. It's your opportunity. Cast your vote. Who's going to be the boss, Russo or Rhodes? Go to TNAWrestling.com, and you know while you're there, check out the exclusive Victory Road merchandise. Great t-shirt, great poster. Vote for either Russo or Rhodes. Also, check out the photos of the interactive fan fest from yesterday, Don. It was incredible. Oh, I'll tell you something. That was one of the best times I've ever had, and the people were so wonderful. We saw people that came from as far as Battle Creek, Michigan, San Jose, California, Portland, Maine, Portland, Oregon. 
Helena Montana, it was unreal at where everybody came from. Interesting, here we have the pairing of two former NWA World Tag Team Championship duos. Here you see Kid Cash, as well as Dallas. They're gonna join forces with The Natural. Chase Stevens and Andy Douglas for an eight-man tag team matchup. Well, you see right here, Eric Watts, as he's coming back in to TNA, and he's gonna be tagging with some other greats, but I wanna talk about the Naturals and Kid Cash in Dallas. You saw Kid Cash trying to take over as the leader right there, citing his experience to be the one to do so. You can just see the look on the Naturals' face. I'm curious to see how these four work together. Yeah, it looks like it may have caused some friction. You've got some awfully big egos to deal with. Opposition team, well, we saw Eric Watts, the former NWA Director of Authority, already making his way down the ramp. Here comes the Empire Saint, Pat Kenny. You know the story behind that nickname, the Empire Saint. We'll get into that in just a second. Here's the man who recently returned to professional wrestling. After a three-year absence, he's back. He's back in TNA, just another incredible free agent acquisition. Shawnee B. Bad, the former WCW TV champion, the former WWE Intercontinental champ. He's now aligned with TNA. And he's a bad man, as we see right now. Three of the four, who else is gonna join? I think Johnny's got the bad last oh, there it goes. Party time here at Universal in Victory Road. Which ring entrance for Johnny B. Bad to join Watts? Pat Kenny, here comes Ron the Truth Killings, the former two-time NWA World Heavyweight Champion. I'll tell you what, it may be the best athlete in that ring. Ron the Truth Killings, you mentioned it, a two-time NWA Champion. This guy can do it all. I mean, you know, we always talk about that division not being about weight limits, it's about no limits. This is a guy who can actually go into the expedition if he wanted. He is so talented, so skilled. And he'll be teaming up with Johnny B. Bad, the Empire State Pat Kenny, and Eric Watts. Never had a chance to catch our breath during that gauntlet. Let's mention it now. Don, have you seen Kevin Nash at all? At all today, at all tonight, before the show? We all know that NWA World's Heavyweight title matchup in our main event, Jeff Jarrett, Jeff Hardy. The word has been Scott Hall aligned with Jeff Jarrett, Kevin Nash aligned with Jeff Hardy. I have not seen Kevin Nash at all today. No, I've heard Scott Hall's in the building. I have not heard a thing about Kevin Nash, and that's all I can tell you. I, I don't know whether he's coming or not, but we do know that he was supposed to be here, and we have not seen him. The Empire Saint, Kenny, and Kid Cash, Cash with the deep arms. Let's talk about this Empire Saint nickname. Because of the sportsmanlike demeanor that Pat Kenny had while competing in organized sports, his teammates and his opponents alike have labeled him the Empire Saint. Of course, Empire relating to his New York roots. Big college athlete, VCU, Virginia Commonwealth baseball star as he tags in his partner, Shawnee B. Bad, and now you see Kid Cash turns things over to Andy Douglas. Well, one thing you'll, you'll know about Pat Kenny is his spirit, his heart. He has no quit in him. The guy is just, like you said, he's an athlete from every sixth of the Shawnee B. Bad, absolutely being a bad man in the ring right now as he was just on fire. Look how crisp and smooth Johnny B. Bad was. I mean, here's a guy who's been away from the ring for so long that you think he'd be rusty, not showing a better rust. Incredible physical condition of Johnny B. Bad, and you talked to him, Don, before the broadcast tonight. You can see that he's got that fire back. Oh, he did. He was so fired up to get that ring. And he was like, I get to work with Ron the Truth Killing to Eric Watts. And Pat Kenny, and just, what a great group of guys. He felt like he got there with it. Oh, nice kick to Eric Watts, but you saw what Chase Stevens did as he was cutting down. Andy Douglas, tag team partner in the natural, Stevenson. He clipped Watts, the former Louisville quarterback, dropped him to the mat, and now here comes the big man, Dallas in. Six foot nine Dallas, six foot six, six foot seven. He's watch to square off. Side slam, he's got him up. Oh man, Dallas another one. I mean, I've always talked about Cash and Dallas as a tag team being almost a perfect tag team because of their, their blend of size and, and speed and strength and agility. I mean, it's just an amazing tag team these guys are. And what a benefit them in this match. But nice kick right there by Watts. The KID. Let's kick by Watts. 
drops Cass and Kenny stays over to the Empire Saints. Kenny drives Cash face first into the top turnbuckle. A series of right hands to the side of the head of Cash before he's able to reverse Kenny. Shoots him off the ropes. Cash follows up. Nice European uppercut. Knife edge chop. Clubbing blow to the back. And then powers it back first right into the corner. Cash getting the tag into his teammate Dallas right there, wanting the double team right here. Watch how good these two work together. Cash sets him up. Dallas going to kick, but that's not to leave out. The heart of Fat Kenny, the heart of the Empire State. He's got no quit in him at all. He walked right into the big boot of Dallas. Oh, to take one to give one, I think, is probably how you would describe the offense. Check this out. You've got to be kidding. Yes, now going for the backwards boot zone, but the Empire State able to get out of the way. Never expected to see that from Dallas. Not able to connect with that move. So the truth is in, and the truth is cleaning house. Oh, the truth fired up. I mean, this guy is such a physical specimen. I mean, muscle just rippling. Look at the hex kick right there. He levels takes Stevens. Pin attempt. Killings goes for the cover. Dallas able to break it up. It looked like Ron the Truth was going to take care of Chase Stevens and gain the win for his team. Oh, you see Eric Watt right there take Dallas over the top of the rope as it's just broken loose right now. It's trying to be bad. Takes Kid Cash out there. And All just eight men try to follow the mayhem. All eight men in the battle. Johnny B. Bad, where you see him with Chase Stevens. Douglas charges at Killings and Cash takes him up and over the apron. Oh, nice shot right there by Ron the Truth Killings as he sends Andy Douglas down. And Johnny B. Bad going up to the top rope. I think everybody's inspired by the X Division athletes. Wow! Did you see Johnny B. Bad pull off the Arcarada? Calls that the bad mood. Now it's put the you in a bad mood if you have to take it. It's this double underhook move by the truth. Oh man, that was wicked if he just put his head down and he got it. It's over. Planted him. Double arm DDT by Ron the Truth. Killings leads to the one, two, three, and the victory. Ron the Truth Killings, Johnny B. Bad, the Empire Satan, Eric Watts celebrate. Unbelievable action right there. What a finish by Ron the Truth Killings. Let's send it outside. We understand there's a limo arriving here at the arena. Let's send it to Shane Douglas. Go, Shane. We see Shane Douglas looking inside the limo. The franchise is here to get the first exclusive words with Kevin Nash. So Kevin Nash is looking to see me. So maybe I can get myself here. So I'm here to get the first words of Kevin Nash here at Victory Road. I'm just telling you politely, Kevin Nash is not in this limo. Maybe I didn't make myself clear to you, big man. If he's not in this limousine, I wouldn't know who is because I am going to get a word with whoever's in this limousine. There you see our night vision camera that takes you inside the lockdown area where the monster abyss. Just like his opponents, Raven and Monty Brown, they've been without food, they've been without water for 24 hours. We'll get comments from Raven and Brown later about the monster's ball, that no disqualification matchup, Don, that is yet to come. That one's gonna be wild. Oh, man, think about it, man. Like you said, no food, no water for 24 hours. They're just putting themselves into a state of readiness, and man, is it going to be wicked later on the monster ball abyss money brown and raven if you haven't had the chance to see these mini superstars from mexico ladies and gentlemen you're in for a treat that was kiratita morgan translated to english morgan the little pirate a midget version of a heavyweight lucha libre wrestler parada morgan and here's his opponent Mascarita Sagrada, as you see him coming down, he's a crowd favorite, I'm gonna tell you something, don't let this man's size fool you, because he's got man skills. Mascarita Sagrada, the mini version of the heavyweight luchador, Mascara Sagrada, translated, the sacred mask. I've watched midget wrestlers through the years, from Sky Low Low to Little Beaver to Lord Littlebrook, and in my opinion, Mascarita Sagrada is the absolute best that I've ever seen. My estimate about, what would you say, Don, three feet six inches tall? Wow, that's a pretty pretty tall estimate right there. I, barely over three feet, like I said, three and a half feet, but and when you realize it, when you realize it, uh, Perfita Morgan looks like a giant compared to Mascarita Listen to the weigh-in. Piratita Morgan came in at 80 kilos. Translates to 175 pounds. Mascarita Sagrada up off the back of Piratita and then the arm drag. Mascarita Sagrada, 45 kilos, about 99 pounds. 
A 76 pound weight advantage for Piratita Morgan. Yeah, but what he lacks in size, he makes up for it. Speed, quickness, and his incredible moves for the of his side. Double spring, then the drop kick sends Piratita down to the floor. I think Piratita just wanted to kind of catch his bearing. Check this out. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, great boom right there by Sagan. Springs off the middle rope. Cross body block on Piratita. The sacred mask, Mascarita Sagrada. Beautiful move. It's been all Mascarita Sagrada here in this match right now as Baratita Morgan trying to get back in the ring, trying to catch his bearings. I think the, the speed of, of Mascarita is just kind of throwing him off balance and he's going to try to catch his breath and figure out a way to handle it. 15 plus years as a pro for Mascarita Sagrada. Outside, almost as if he's waiting for Piratita to turn around. Look at Mascarita goes high risk. Look at the balance right there, but oh! We oh, got him! Two! No! The size right there, Morgan, as he pushes off. Mascarita Sagrada. You know, an interesting story. When Rey Mysterio Jr. started out, the promoters actually were considering putting him in as a mini superstar years ago in Mexico. Wow. Piratita That's why they call you the professor. Big right hand, the side of the head of Mascarita Sagrada. Piratina takes Mascarita by the mask. He's gonna try and shoot him off. Mascarita just puts on the brakes. He's gonna take him up out of the fire that's carrying that just drops him down. Look out! Oh, now he's using his size and weight as a man. He just kind of methodically did it. Kind of just saw 100, 175 yeah. pounds. It's a 76 pound weight advantage as he just dropped down. As you see, referee Mike Posey checking on the condition of Mascarita Sagrada. Oh, he, look at him, he's out cold. That's what happens with the weight advantage. I mean, he hit him with the full force of his 175 pounds. Look at this. Check it for a heartbeat. Check it for a heartbeat. Oh my gosh. That's good. It's got his heart. What are they doing? They're praying. Looks like they're giving him the last one. Oh, oh, what a heat. This flies out of there. Obviously, it's very hard. A miracle comeback here for Mascarita. Series of wild drags, and there's one for Posey. He got it all. Oh. Plays at the wrong time as he catches the right. Mascarita, the spring up the middle row. Sagrada puts it together to take out Piratina Morgan. That was a miracle comeback. Oh, I'll tell you what, again, he kind of, I don't know whether he's playing possum or the prayers actually work. <laughs> but one thing I know of, what the, the power of prayer happened, we saw Masquerita Sagrada fly out of there and take total advantage. Let's send it back to our broadcast colleague, Scott Hudson. He's standing by with the three live crew. And DOA Decision 2004 is, of course, brought to you by Backyard Wrestling 2. There goes the neighborhood coming soon for PS2 and Xbox. And still, it looks like we've got about a 10-point difference with Dusty Rhodes in the lead over the current director of authority, Vince Russo. Still plenty of time to get your vote in at NWATNA.com. Do that quickly. Not too much time left to vote. We are waiting right now for, for results from California and the West Coast before we final the- Yo, yo, it's on and popping. Yo, old town we're gonna start this off right. First of all, the truth, he went out there and he showed and proved. Now tonight, me and BG, we're gonna go out there and bring the tag titles to the 3LA camp. And let me tell you something, Team Canada, not only have you started something you don't know how to finish, you've started something you don't even know how to start. Orale! Just like K-Dog said, tonight, 3LK regains what has been rightfully theirs from the get-go. And if you didn't know, it's cause we told you so. So sit back, relax, watch us do the dang thing. Team Canada, we're about to school you boys. It's time the three live crew and Team Canada are gonna hook it up for the NWA World Tag Team titles. Mike and Don. And Don, it is up next. It's the NWA World Tag Team titles at stake. Three live crew in the role of the challengers. They gonna take it to Team Canada champions. Well, I'll tell you something, win it. What's going on? Next oh, match is scheduled. Oh. Next match is scheduled to be for the tag team oh, championship. It's gonna take a minute because here he comes. Scott Hall! You talk about an impromptu appearance. Scott Hall just interrupted our on camera. And Scott Hall is making his way down the ramp towards the ring. Oh, this one's gonna be interesting. See what he's got to say. We know he said that he was in the camp of Tim Carrick. 
Let's see what's on his mind. Is the crowd going crazy for one of the greats? Maybe he will shed some light yes. on this situation involving Kevin Nash. We had heard that Scott Hall was here, and of course, you mentioned it, supporting Jeff Jarrett. No one has seen Kevin Nash, however, at any point today here at the arena in Orlando, Florida. What a wow, reaction what a rea Hall. Get ready to say that. What a crowd reaction. They're on their feet. They're standing as one. Any idea what he's going to say? Oh, uh... No, 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 no. Let, let him do it, let him do it. Let him do it, Don. Hey, yo. <laughs> All right, on TNA, 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 Now you know you can't throw a party without inviting Scott Hall. Cuz it's no, it's no secret, it's no secret that I don't miss many parties. Well, that's the good news. Now I have some bad news for you. Kevin Nash, big sexy. Big sexy will not be here tonight. What? Not going to be here. He won't be he, here. Well, I mean, we haven't seen him all day, so I guess that would make sense. And you, you can trust me on that one. Now, do you trust him? I don't know. All you TNA fans right me, might remember that I was at the first TNA show, and I'm here at Victory Road, and seeing how I'm the guy who invented the ladder match. One of the pioneers. Nobody, nobody is more interested in the main event tonight than me. So, everybody stay tuned and may the best Jeff win. May the best Jeff win. Pretty non-committal. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, NWA TNA proudly brings to you not one, not two, but the three laugh crew. Look at the power of those right there. You think you're taking these belts? I don't think so. Ha, 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 ha. I'll tell you what, Canuck from north of the border, you bring the gold, we're taking away from Victory Road. We will be the next NWA Tag Team Champions of the World! The three, the two. Lord have mercy. It was just a momentary interruption from Scott Hall because now it's time for the NWA World Tag Team Championship matchup involving the crew, the three live crew, BG James and Conan in the role of the challengers against the champions, Team Canada, Bobby Roode and Eric Young. And let's go to the tag lines. Team Canada now has possession of two of the three championships. Demore's crew has the X Division title as well as the tag belts. BG James and Conan recently gained the spot as number one contenders when they knocked off the Naturals on impact. Three live crew, huge edge in overall experience and in title bouts, but the young Canadians may have an advantage the longer the match goes. Three live crew will be dropping like bombs. It has been nearly a year. Since three live crew won the NWA World Tag Team title, 
TG James on the right, Conan on the left. We dedicated themselves several months ago with one thing in mind, regaining those elusive championship belts. This is the opportunity they've been waiting for. A very competitive team, a tag team division. Three Live Crew must capitalize now. Oh, yeah, yeah, where are dogs at? Where they at? Yo, 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 let me speak on this. All I learned. Now let's kick that old school with a little new age swing. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, tuned to all ages, NWA TNA proudly brings to you, it's soon to be, Tag Team Champions of the World! Not one, not two, but the three live crew! They've never been closer than right now. And in the same the very unique team of James Storm of America's Most Wanted and Christopher Daniels of Triple X to capture the title belts. The crew must find a way, in my opinion, to stay focused on Rude and Young and not fall prey to the distraction element that's always provided by the interference, the blatant interference of the Team Canada coach Scott Demore. Oh, absolutely, Mike. And I'll tell you something, though. If there's two people that have the experience and the wisdom to know what Scott DeMore is all about, it's B.G. James and Conan. They have waited almost a year to get this shot. They've got it. I'm going to tell you something. They're not going to let Scott DeMore get in their way. Bobby Roode and Joe Zavier Young are going to have to beat him straight up. You saw one of the bullet points in the taglines, experience versus youth. Ready for the raw numbers in terms of that actual breakdown? Three live crew, BG James and Conan. BG James, 12 years as a pro. Conan, 16 total, 28 years of experience. Team Canada, Bobby Roode, the man in the ring right now, six year pro. There you see the close up look at Roode. His partner, Eric Young, five total, 11 years. 28 to 11 in terms of in ring experience, the edge to the challengers, the crew. Well, I'll tell you what, though, some people, like you said, might give the edge to the youth. And when you look at a stud like Bobby Roode, and he is, love him or hate him, this guy has got skill. He's so strong. But BG James cleaning house. But don't you agree that the longer this match yes. goes, the advantage to the younger team, Team Canada? Oh, absolutely. I'm going to tell you something. We, we've seen these guys do so many great things. But again, sometimes that, that drive to win the title is not they probably wonder how many more of these they've got left. I think they're gonna just forget about their hate and just go out there and take it to town. BG James oh, yeah. went for a cross body block. Eric Young able to drop down and avoid him. BG spills out to the arena floor. Bobby Roode Ooh. takes him and drives him back first. Oh, right into the side of the ring with the coach to more cheering him off. Yeah, that's what happened right there. BG James went for it and missed it. Bobby Roode taking advantage of some wicked blows to the back, then took the breath out of him when he hit him into the corner of the ring. Just what we'd expect from Team Canada's Bobby Roode. We always call him the muscle man, the power man of Team Canada. He will send BG James back in where Eric Young follows up. Well, I'm gonna tell you something. BG James right now needs to catch his breath. He needs to get a tag into Conan. Conan can then use his power and his strength to kind of get the advantage back on their side. But I talked about how cohesive Team Canada is. We've seen them now for a long time. Team Canada works together as good as anybody. They know each other. Backbreaker, minute tip. Oh, almost had it right there. It's the time Eric Young. I'll tell you something. These guys are going to utilize their teamwork and they're going to keep BG James on their side of the six sided ring. There's the strategy. You just mentioned it. Now we're seeing it. Tag is in. Who's the legal man? Big scoop and a slam on BG. Eric Young able to drop the elbow on the way out. Look, one right after another. I mean, they're just not giving BG James as he got out. He almost had the pin right there. It was almost over. You talked about them being a unit, and they really are so brisk with their tags, so effective with their offense. Oh, look at that.
appreciate that. The crowd right now. I'll tell you what, though, the crowd sometimes think that that pumps up the other side, but it also takes off Dean Kenneman. It also got the Dean James fired up. Off the mid ring exchange, attempting to shot off into the ropes. Oh, oh, BG. Kicked by BG. Nails him with the kick. Ooh. But what a collision in mid ring. Bobby Roode, I mean, this is somebody I'm oh. actually going after the heavyweight champion. He wanted a nice giant to punch on him right there. Just a, just a he knows he's there. Roof definitely got the better of that collision. He took the shoulder into BG. Oh, the James referee's and... distracted his Conan's man. That's what I'm talking about, Team Kenner. They take advantage of those situations, Mike. Now puts the boots to BG James after the assist from Roof, then just drops down with a blatant chokehold. Oh, right there, and the referee comes in and stops it. I'll tell you what, they will take every advantage that they can, every cheap shot they can. There's no doubt about it. Front but whatever lock. it takes to get the job done. Front face lock applied here by Eric Young. Just 24 years of age. Talk about the great youth trained for the ring. My former professional wrestler, Waldo Von Eric, still has that front face lock on as BG James tries to fight back and tries to get that momentum on its side. I'll tell you what, the crowd driving him on at BG James. I mean, this guy is somehow surviving and the longer you survive, that means you still have a chance. And he got the tag. No, no, but referee Andrew Tyler oh, never saw it. legal but it was out of the sight out of the line of vision of referee andrew thomas and there's the follow-up elbow drop eric young can he put away bg here's the pin here's one here's two. Oh, oh how he's fighting out of these other double takes up conan right there actually hurt his partner right he's yelling to the referee trying to point what was watch demore demore up on the apron again now he's distracted the referee conan's getting tired of it canadian he's flag in. flag and play wrapped around the hockey stick and duck of the Oh, nice move right there by BG James. He used the hockey stick against him. Dropped down all of his weight across the hockey stick. That allowed Rude and Young to crash heads together. Let gravity take its course. Imperative here for BG James to get to his side of the six-sided ring and employ no. the tag, and here it is. Hot tag to Conan. Hey, what Conan dedicated himself so much to getting back in shape. Look at this guy. He's just got such power. Whoa, man, they see how high he had here and got up in the air, and now he sends Bobby Roode over. Great series of moves by Conan, including that rolling thunder lariat. Wow, look at the power of Conan. Conan taking care of both members of Team Canada. It was the perfect time to get the tag into Conan, and Conan has turned this matchup in favor of the crew. Oh, look at this right here as he's just winding him around and going to try to get something here. Got him in the sunrise to keep the sunrise. Oh, Bobby Roode just in time. It was a great move because Eric Young didn't have much time left. You can see the pain in his face. One of the other things that we've seen from this rededication from Conan is back to his roots and using submission moves, but that time Bobby Roode with a perfect spine buster on BG James. I'll tell you what, Conan just sent Eric Set him up here. He'll burn him, but here goes Bobby Roode. Northern Lariat, that clothesline from behind, if he can get him, you see that Roode's measuring BG when he gets to his feet. Oh, the Conan's got his foot. Great move there by Conan, trying to help him find his spot. BG gets the boot up. Conan able to hook the leg of Roode. That enabled BG James to turn around, and BG James takes down Roode. Doubles him over that time. Boot to the midsection. Is he going to go pump handle? He's going for the pump handle. Right Wait a minute, Scott Demore. And here comes Brother Truth Killing. He had their back. The crew had strategy. They had a game plan. The Truth, the third member of the crew, came to the ring and countered. The oh, ball. but Bobby Roode caught BG James when he was looking at the aftermath. Wow. Northern Lariat decked BG James. Oh, here's the opportunity now for Team Canada to retain the belt. Conan, and is he going to go for the Lariat again? Oh, Conan gets out of the way just in time. Face plants it right there to the man. Here it goes. Oh, caught him with the K-Factor. Two. He got it. We've got new chance. Two. Man, man. We've been dropping like This was their night. They knew that this was their chance. This was their opportunity. And that's exactly what they did. They take advantage of it. The crew gets the title. The new tag team champion of the world. Let's hear from Raven. We understand that we are going to hear comments at this point from Raven about the upcoming three-way notice qualification matchup, the Monsters Ball. Watching me alone in a room by myself was a major mistake because I think it's driven me 
certifiably out of my mind. Because being crazy was the only thing that kept me from going insane. <laughs> Unfortunately for my opponents, somebody has to pay for tonight's transgressions. Monty Brown, Abyss, welcome to the age of apocalypse. I'm in a game of fools without no rules. Monsters ball, they'll take the fall. I drop the bait, that I decide their fate. Dropping the bomb, intellectual Vietnam. Hardcore to the bone, my home is your home. Welcome to the Terror Dome. Quote the Raven, nevermore. Now let me out of here, cause I wanna hurt somebody. Quote the Raven, nevermore. Growing up on the mean streets of New York, Vince Russo knows what it means to carry a big stick. In a world stained by violence, injustice, and deceit, Vince Russo stands tall as a giant in putting over the law by any means necessary. However, you have a choice. For there is another side, one that represents old school wrestling, interviews on an endless loop, and yes, that legendary but ridiculous bionic elbow. You make the choice. November 7th, vote Vince Russo, Director of Authority. I'm Vince Russo, and I approve this message. Ladies and gentlemen, many have been labeled as icons in their chosen profession, but few have the history, the background, and the resume to match the label. Rowdy Roddy Piper is that exception. Well, you couldn't have said it better yourself, Mike, and let me tell you something. This crowd is going berserk. They appreciate everything that Roddy Piper has done in his career. When you think back through the years, many of those special moments, those once-in-a-lifetime memories, those memorable events in wrestling have included and featured Roddy Piper. He made an art out of the confrontational interview. He made his In the Pit segments part of our cultural landscape. And tonight, In the Pit is back, and I'm dying to find out who the special mystery guest is going to be. Nobody's sitting down. Nobody. Tonight, tonight with particular... That's exactly what I'm going to talk about. This is about legends. I have been stabbed. I've had stalkers in bars. I've had people try to kill me in cars. Those people are liars, cowards, and thieves. They're sniveling little brats. I want to talk about legends. I want to show the wrestling world what a real man does and how a real man stands up. And who I'm about to introduce is a man that put the X in X Division years before there was one. And a man that I got to settle a score with. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome at this time the one, the only, Superfly! Jimmy Snooker! Wow! Superfly Jimmy Snooker! I mean, how appropriate for the first hike in the pit with Roddy Piper, for the first one in the TNA era to have the legend, the Superfly Jimmy Snooker be the first guest. I mean, think about it, Don. For 20 years, Jimmy Snooker and Roddy Piper, they've been linked because of that famous pit segment, the most memorable pit ever. And really, in my mind, arguably Piper's career achieved that legendary status when he cracked a coconut over the head of Jimmy the Superfly Snooker back in 1984. Well, let's see what happens now when they're confronted again face to face. Mikal, you want to fight? You're going to have a fight. Hang on, man. Let me tell you something that's been haunting me for 21 years. This man here is in a league of his own. Nobody but nobody can dive off a 30-foot steel cage like the Superfly. Nobody. In the X 
division, they got some good ones, but there's only one great, and that's you. For 21 years, I've known this. Nobody, but nobody, could have taken a shot with a coconut like I gave him and got back up. Except you, brother. This has haunted me for years, and I'm talking about men and legends. This is a time where everybody's got to pay the piper, including me. Jimmy, put it in your hand, brother. Put it in your hand, brother. I know, I know what I did to you. I know how much it hurt you. I know what it did to your career. And I'm telling you to right now, champ, let's even the score. I don't give a damn. Baby, lay it on me. Hit me as hard as you can, man. Piper turning his back Hit on me, sucker. Challenging him, daring him to hit him with the coconut. This is important to him. I think he's bothered him for so many years. And look at him, he's looking, he won't do it. Just Maybe staring you need at him. Maybe a little incentive because I can't live with it no more. Remember how I used to talk to you? Remember how I used to say, you used to lay on the beach and get the sun and, you know, eat that pig luau while you made your grandma sell sea cells on the seashore to pay the rent because you were too lazy to. Do you remember that part, Jimmy, huh? I'm needing you. Go ahead, Jimmy. Give it to me one time, brother. Even a score so I can go away in peace and take out a piece of my heart like I did you. Now damn well do it, man. Hit me! Turns his back again! Hit me! He's trying to taunt him! It's not doing anything! What? Who's this? What's this? You know what, man? Your heart hey. and your soul have been so pure. It's Kid Cash. What's Kid Cash Excuse doing me. in here? Excuse me. Oh, man. What, why is this interruption? And by of all people, Cash, it's got nothing to do with him. What is going on here? You're putting this man over for doing nothing? I tell you what, you all fart. Step back and let me handle this. Oh. Jimmy Nerf. Superfly Snooker, the originator of the Big Bad Splash, the first original X Division, huh? The only thing that you were good for was falling off of a steel cage in Madison Square Garden. It's ridiculous. Oh, it's such a disrespect. Where were you, old man, when I did a 20-foot high hurricanrana through a table? Let me tell you something. You might have been good in your day, but you would never be able to carry my jock strap. Oh, this is ridiculous. This is sickening to what it is. Total lack oh, of respect. You gonna give me the eye? You gonna give me that crazy eye, huh? Well, I tell you what. I knew you were coming here, and I heard what you were saying. I got something I want to say to you, and it's about time that the new age of X Division says it right now. Oh, he went for it! And Snooker stopped it! Snooker's got him throttled! Oh, oh Snooker choking him! Oh, let him have it! See, Piper Cherry Snooker! Oh, oh, super fly! Oh, wait a minute, come on! Jamie Kazarian oh, double teaming on oh, Snooker! Come on, you're disrespecting a legend! Why, why is it Piper? Oh, Piper! Finally! Nah, he's not gonna stand for it! Thankfully, Piper! Sanjay down the background! Sanjay! Wow, what a kick he took right there on the Kid Cash, but now he's getting beat down. Now Shane and Kazarian double team on Sanjay. Ducks that double clothesline. Wow, wow look at the apple double. Sanjay Dutt coming into the aid and takes the both out of the ring. Sanjay takes him down to the floor with a double clothesline. 
Thankfully, Sanjay Dutt came oh, no. back. Oh, no! Cash has the got the coconut! The snuck up. Oh, he just cracked Sanjay Dutt with the coconut! Just smashed him right in the head. He oh. Cash laid out Sanjay Dutt. You don't come in the Piper's pit and take over. He just you don't do it! And look at Piper! Piper chasing Kid Cash, who bails out. Kid Cash drops down to the floor. Y'all just nailed him. What'd you think? That was cool, wasn't it? Look how proud he is. That was cool, wasn't it? I can't believe it. Oh, 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 I didn't bring the coconut in there. He's saying he didn't bring in the coconut. I understand what we can get to the ring right there and see what's going on. Oh, oh Sanjay, Sanjay does Sanjay just laid out. out. Wow. 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 Now let's get comments from Monty Brown about tonight's Monsters Ball. That ain't wow. cool. Look at him, dude. Bro. There's nothing more dangerous than a caged alpha male. There's nothing more dangerous than an alpha male with a purpose. And my purpose will be to destroy and dismantle any and everything you place in my path. Raven, Abyss, Victory Road, Monsters Ball, marks the end of both of your roads. Raven, no more mindless delusions, no more delusions of grandeur. Abyss, no more constipation problems. And the alpha male will end it all when you both will feel the pounce. What pounce, huh? Pounce. Period. You may not know. You may me, not know me, but you will. I played in two Super Bowls. Competed for the Olympics. But this is my real passion, my dream, my legacy, my reason for living. The turning point, the turning point, the turning point is here. The moment I live the dream, I dare to dream. Destiny, destiny, destiny awaits. Bring it on. TNA Wrestling presents Turning Point, live December 5th on pay-per-view. It's Mike today and Don West back at ringside. We hope you're enjoying this great Victory Road pay-per-view. Want to remind you about TNA's Turning Point event. It's going to be Sunday, December the 5th. But first, let's take a look at the individual, the woman who's issued the open challenge, Trinity. I'm going to offer the opportunity for any woman, anywhere, to challenge Trinity. I dare you. But he also said she may not be happy with his choice for her opponent, Don. Well, you you made such a great point. She took total control of her career, and she's kind of taken over the NYC, the New York connection. We've, we've not seen this attitude in Trinity for a long, long time. She's confident. She's assured of herself. That's why she issued the open challenge. I'm anxious to see who's going to answer. Trinity in ring with Glenn Gilberti and Johnny Swinger. Up in New York, when you call somebody out, 
somebody comes out. People show up no matter what. Even if they come out of the closet, they show up. You know, it's no surprise to me, just as I suspected, a no-show, you know? I think they, everybody had uh, prior obligations, you know, maybe they're getting a facial or a pedicure, or they fear the New York knockout. Well, I guess it's unquestionable, without a doubt, that Trinity is the undisputed Italian goddess of wrestling. So, paparazzis, get your cameras ready. Here comes the beauty shot. Wow, nobody answered the challenge. Nobody, and she's celebrating. Yeah, check this out. The NYC's Gilberti and Swinger hoisting her up in the air. They're gonna take a victory lap at Victory Road. Because, wait a minute, could it be? It is, wow, Jacqueline! So sad that he had an opponent for the NWA's director of authority was right. And it is Jack on another free agent joining TNA. We talked about how many of the great stars want to enter TNA, and here's another one in Jacqueline. Answering the challenge, not even going to allow Trinity to act like she is the king of this street. Look at this. Nice kick right there by Jack. It sends her right into the arms of Swinger and Bill Verde. Now Jacqueline outside the floor. Oh, she's just in total control right here. The beauty of it is she's got the element of surprise on her side. Trinity's feeling like nobody was going to answer at all. Clint Gilberti grabbed her leg as she tried to get in the game and opened the door for Trinity to take advantage, and now she's got the momentum. You know, Don, it was just a couple of months ago when Jacqueline defeated Chavo Guerrero to win the WWE Cruiserweight title with brand new Trinity cover just to two count on Jacqueline. Well, now she's here in the ring in this first ever three-hour pay-per-view with DNA, and she's answered the call to Trinity, but Trinity, somebody who's a stuntman, somebody who jumped out of airplanes, who's been motorcycles, been fire pits, cell phone fire and stuff, she's not afraid of anybody, and she's sure not afraid of Jack. Trying to choke the life out of Jacqueline right there as referee Mike Posey just physically gets in the battle and pulls Trinity off. Oh, now you see the knife edge chops, it's good to kick him there, the power of Trinity is now she's got has no idea of her skill. Power slam, follow, kick, then the cover, and then the two count for Trinity on Jacqueline. That just respect him right there, shoving her face to the man. Jacqueline trying to get up and somehow, some way, get his back and look at the blow. Just throwing him one after another and just sends Trinity down. Here's another one, connecting every time. A series of right hands on the button for Jacqueline. Back to the close line and, oh man, took her overhead with that released German suplex. Look at this great deck right here. Now it's going to oh, oh, get oh, the outside. Oh, Jacqueline's leg pulled her off the cover at two. Well, they can. It'll make them look bad if Trinity gets beat. They're not going to allow that to happen. But look at the strength of Jacqueline. She goes up high and just rain the blows and sits with the good move. Oh, but Johnny Swinger takes advantage of it. Down the world. Hot shot variation by Swinger. Drop Jacqueline across the neck and look at this moonsault. Oh, she does it so gracefully. One, two, because of the interference by the NYC. That's the entire difference in this matchup. Gilberti and Swinger interfere. It allows Trinity to hit the moonsault and get the pin and get the win. They were gonna take her up for another victory lap, but she's her own woman. She didn't want to celebrate. Let's send it back to our broadcast colleague, Scott Hudson, who's standing by with Triple X. DOA Decision 2004 brought to you by Backyard Wrestling 2. There goes the neighborhood coming soon, and you can see still about a 10-point difference between Vince Russo and the American Dream Dusty Rhodes. You've got about 30 minutes left, and I personally have been on the phone with Governor Jeb Bush. I even scared up Katherine Harris to make sure that the Florida count's going to be on the up and up. We're going to have a new... Scott Hudson, I want to get something off my chest. I want to apologize to this man right here. You see, I spent the better part of a year trying to tell him that the best thing for Triple X was to play it fair and walk a straight line. When all along, we should have been doing it the way we always did it and beat people up. Chris, like I told you, our new attitude is our old attitude. We already took out James Storm. So, one down, 
one to go. Christopher Daniels, that seems more than a little overconfident, if you ask me. Overconfident? Yeah. You want to know how confident I am? I'm giving advice to the house cat and the cow poke. You better say your damn prayers, because the only way you're getting out of that ring alive is if you beg God for mercy. Otherwise, we're going to eat you alive, and I'm not even half joking. Trust me, boys. Y'all don't want none of this. The Monsters Ball is coming up. Raven, you want to play games? This is not the place for games. You want to play games? Go get a ball. Or I've got a ball for you. It's called the Monsters Ball. Here's a game for you, Raven. Oh, my gosh, look at the power. How about this, a bitch? In his mind, that's the Monster of Mass. Oh, and he gets <laughs> Monty Brown, it's time for you to stop flapping your gums and staring at the screen. You're watching the monster of abyss. Six foot eight, 350 pounds. He's not merely the best big man in pro wrestling. He's the best man, period. And he's going to prove it to you and Raven at the three-way Monsters Ball on November 7th at Victory Road, the biggest event in the history of TNA wrestling. 24 hours, no food, no water. Lately, the voices in my head have been silenced, and they've been replaced by this ticking sound. Tick, tick, tick. Monty Brown of this Victory Road Monsters Ball. A war is about to begin. And war is not just the business of death. It is the antithesis of life. It is hope, torture, and violated. 24 hours alone will bring me clarity. Who else will drive me insane? <laughs> I don't care which one. Welcome to the Terror Dome. collision course. This match has already started. While Monty Brown is coming out of the ramp, Raven took the shot at Abyss. Now Abyss is taking the Raven on the rail. There is no disqualifications in this match, which is the only way he can do it fairly. It's his team because anything and everything is possible. I have to give props to TNA management for making that preemptive move and making this a no disqualification matchup. Pretty obvious when you put these three together that you've just got to turn them loose in a no DQ situation. One fall to the finish, anything and everything goes. It's going to be interesting to see who gets acclimated to the light quicker. And wow, a fist just slammed the alpha male right into the steel ring post. And of course, a fist without those distractions that he had back in his, his rising TNA for much of 2004. He's more dangerous than ever. I still want to know who that mysterious voice was. I want to verify it. It is kind of got behind the fist. Maybe we'll find out about that. If you see right here, this with the dark skin and again. Anything that's not nailed down is going to be used in this match. You feel count on it. Feel free to use it as a weapon, and they sure will. Easy done. Easy done. Easy done. Easy done. Easy done. And the alpha male. I think how all three of these guys have been so close to the end of the final picture. The end of the game. Jeff, the past several months, the opportunity to shot the fish to Jeff Hardy tonight. I, I'll tell you what, you're, you're so accurate about that because all of them thought, that, wait a minute, here he is. Who is it? I, my presumption is as we look at the rafters from up on high here at Victory Road, that that is the mouthpiece, the spokesperson for this monster abyss. Well, show your face so we know who you are. Oh, abyss with the 
cow, taking them out of the bag, positioning them in the ring. And now he's going to try and go to the corner. What's he going to do? He's the alpha male Monty Brown. Oh, he's going to try to throw Monty Brown right onto the pile of it there, and he'll hold it. That'll be just about all that Monty Brown can take. Monty Brown trying to fight back from the top. Boy, he's going to take position. It's just trading blows right now. It's a bit of trading going high. Monty Brown's got to get off those ropes. Looks like he's going to try and suplex him under the thumbtacks. Oh, you can see it, and there he is. He's going for it. Just fighting. Buddy Brown's fighting for everything that he's got. With that 6 8 3 50 of a bitch that he's fighting. Yeah, but that's an athlete that's fighting him back. And you see Buddy Brown just going close. Right hand after right hand to the side of the head by Buddy Brown. Oh, headbutt by Abyss. He's just headbutt by Abyss. Oh, another one right there. Uh oh, wait a minute. Raven. Raven in. Look out. Oh, my God. organization the pay-per-view event as well as the best damn sports shows next week are are really vital to the future of this company because it's tna it's the future of professional wrestling right here came from buffalo new york drove all the way down i think fans have had a great time out here today and hopefully they continue to support total non-stop action the only wrestling for a real wrestling fan saving aj styles i got the aj styles t-shirt i've been here since the beginning and this is something that you know i've grown with it's, it's kind of like I don't want to say it's it's my baby, but you know what I'm saying? I've, I've worked through the hard times. You see the kind of great response that we have here and the, the great reactions from you people and the fact that you travel uh, really all over the world to come to this event. It really means so much to us. DNA, 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 DNA. With Team Canada, Scott Demore and Petey Williams. And Scott Demore, it doesn't look like it's a good night for Team Canada already. Bobby Roode and Eric Young have lost the tag team titles and the odds makers the experts have put the champion pd williams as the underdog against the challenger aj styles arguably one of the greatest x division champions hey aj styles this aj styles that you see this i'm the x division champion styles let's see how phenomenal you really are when you fall victim 
to the Canadian Destroyer. <laughs> Hudson, hold up. Hold the microphone. AJ Styles, you don't realize who you're dealing with. And you don't know how far reaching my powers are. If you've been watching Impact, you see when the coach else jump, even the world's heavyweight champion asks how high. And I'm going to make a bold proclamation right here. And Hudson, I want you to stand here. And Petey, listen to me good. If AJ Styles somehow wins the match tonight, I'm going to walk out of here and go all the way back to Windsor, Ontario, Canada, never to be heard from again. You ready for this? Let's go. Wow, Damore says he's gone. If Petey Williams doesn't come through, let's get to it. Let's get to the X Division heavyweight title match. Here's how it went down. Petey Williams is an amazing athlete and the first ever Canadian X Division champion with a deadly weapon no one has been able to survive. The Canadian Destroyer. athlete in professional wrestling today. TNA Wrestling's only triple crown winner. He is the phenomenal AJ Styles. Athletes will step into the ring for the first time to face off one on one. It's the Styles Clash versus the Canadian Destroyer. It's Petey Williams versus the phenomenal AJ Styles for the X Division Championship of the World. Don, are you ready for the X Division title matchup? Are you ready for the X Division title matchup? Are you kidding me? AJ Styles, Petey Williams. This is going to be fantastic! It is up next! X Division title on the line. There's the champ, Petey Williams from Team Canada, the captain. There's the challenger, AJ. Let's go to the X Factors and break it down. Unique game plan for Williams and Damore. This time, the champion made the first move to get the challenger's attention. The phenomenal one has returned to his TNA roots, the X Division. He'll settle for nothing less than regaining the gold. It could boil down to the signature moves of both men. Will Williams prevail with that sick the pile driver? Or can AJ hit the clash? Avoiding those moves could be as important as connecting with them. He wants to prove to the world he's 
the best in the world. Without question, the biggest match of Katie Williams' career. I wish I would have known that Scott DeMore was going to guarantee victory before this match, or the fact that he would never be seen again here in TNA. I would have definitely put that as one of the X-Factor bullet points. Well, I'll tell you what, you saw the expression of Katie Williams' face. He couldn't believe it, but sometimes desperate means call for desperate measures. And Scott DeMore just lost his tag titles, but it was he can lost his three life throw. He couldn't allow it to happen right here. He's trying to give Petey Williams every instant of their end. Petey Williams looks to prove to the wrestling world that he deserves to be called the X-Division champ. That's only accomplished one way, by beating the best AJ Styles. We're going to see right now how Petey Williams handles himself early on. AJ Styles so accomplished in these matches. So comfortable in these matches. Petey Williams, though, an extremely great athlete. Very powerful. Big load. 
Well, you can't admire him, but you know what? That's the great thing about Ricky Rowe. People know about it. They travel from all over the room, even Canada, to be here for this match. Four shot delivered by Petey Williams. He has Styles in trouble in the corner. Charges at him. AJ able to get the elbow up. Nice elbow there by AJ. Look at that camera shot. Oh, oh corner cam. Petey Williams stopped it. Oh, he's got him again. And AJ hung up again. Oh, AJ. Oh, how did he do that? He's so innovative. He thinks so well. I've never seen anybody that could just completely reverse his mind and do what it has, and has to do. Have you ever seen anybody who can come up with a move that you've never seen before? Got in almost every match. That's why he's phenomenal. It's somebody that can think on their feet or even when they're off their feet. That's AJ Styles. Oh! He caught it with the Bailey! Sensational. Beautiful. The importance of this night, Don, as we see both men down. It's really driven home as we look around ringside. Photographers representing publications from all over the world. The U.S., Canada, Japan, as well as we take a replay look. Oh, look at this AJ Styles. Now watch here. Watch how he does this. Wow. It's upside down. Hits the Pele backwards. And again, Petey Williams never saw it coming. Never. And it. Never. Exchange here. Both men delivering four-arm shots. Who's going to get the better of it? Rapid fire shots by AJ. Oh, he's just on fire right now. Chris is in. It's an intense round time. In about two seconds. That's what you got to do. He's just snapped right there, but it's a calculated anger. He knows what he's doing with it. And look at this. Petey Williams just gets wrenched to the mat. Drops him on the back of his head. Suplex fire. The more, the more you know about who may be seeing his team in the See what's at stake. The importance of this match, as we've talked about it from the opening minute. The passion of AJ Styles. The fact that Petey Williams needs to win to keep his coaching team in A. He comes from AJ. Look at that move by Petey Williams. What a counter right there. Into a side rushing leg sweep. What a counter by Petey Williams. And he knows that he caught AJ off guard. you got to give it to Petey Williams. That's thinking on your feet. That's doing your homework. It's like he's, he's motioning here that he's going to reel him in. I don't know whether I'd be so cocky. Well, you know what? If you're going to talk the talk, you got to walk the walk. It could be. It could be. Look at this. Could be the Canadian destroyer. Looked like he was trying it down. The Styles class. We mentioned it earlier. Which finisher? Oh, they're just back and forth. Back and forth. Oh, he changed his image. Wait a minute. Demore just came and picked up the title belt. Did you see that? Oh, no, on our table. He's got Demore. He's got the title belt in his hands, and the referee doesn't realize it. I guess since his man has the title, he can hold it in his hand, but keep an eye on it. AJ! Oh, he's giving Petey getting... a little of his medicine, showing him that he's going to reel him no! in. Oh, he sure is, and you see right there, AJ getting ready to slam him down, but oh, Petey fighting it off! Both men trying for their finishers. AJ takes oh! it Go through! Who's going to get it? Wait a minute. AJ's got it! Turnbuckle, and now AJ comes back. 
nice elbow shot there by AJ Styles. And he goes up and oh, not again. Not again. Not again. The referee, now the referee gets involved. Get him out of here. Get that load out of here. Oh, nice move there by Petey Williams. It's AJ. Trying to come back, trying to win his fourth title. Oh! Corner, Scott Hall. Yeah, Scott Hall looking on as Jeff Jarrett got that look of determination. He knows what's at stake later on. The opposition for Jeff Jarrett in the title ladder match to be provided by the charismatic enigma, Jeff Hardy. I've got to mention it, conspicuous by his absence tonight, the man we expected in his corner, Kevin Nash. a ferocious edge leading to an all-out battle for supremacy that can only leave one team standing. Stone of the total non-stop action wrestling tag team division. Two teams leaving a legacy of teamwork, a legacy of dominance. Which team will go down as best? But you can't condone these kind of actions for crime time. Well, you know how the emotions are with these groups. They can't stand to see anybody get an advantage of anybody else in the team. And now you see Triple H with the beat down. Establish the greatest TNA wrestling tag team of all time. It's America's Most Wanted versus Triple X. Last team standing. Ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to making a case for which tag team has been the best in TNA history, you can make 
make a very strong argument for Triple X. Follow needs of Christopher Daniels on the left. Partner Clyde Tyler on the right. These former NWA World Tag Team title holders, they've been involved in a very complex situation now for several months with their opponents tonight. America's Most Wanted, Don. I'll tell you what, one thing America's Most Wanted knows and one thing they want to correct and rectify is the fact that in head-to-head competition, Triple X has won more times than AMW. I think it's like six to three all round about there. We've had so many different variations with them having enough to, to work together and so forth. They are probably, arguably the two best tag teams in TNA. This is their tent right now to prove who's number one. And there you see America's Most Wanted. Wildcat Chris Harrison, the Tennessee Cowboy James Storm. There you see the close-up look at Storm and James Storm. A death in his family over the course of the past couple of days. James Storm attending the funeral earlier today. Today? Of his grandmother in Tennessee. Who with, practically raised him. But James Storm getting on an airplane because of the importance of this match and making it here to Universal Studios just in time for this match. It's last team, last man standing. When you lose by pinfall or submission, there will be a 10 count to answer the bell. If you don't answer that 10 count, you're eliminated from the match, Don. I'll tell you what, it, it could be the last team standing if, if both teammates are still standing in the end of the game, or last man standing. It's a matter of being able to get on your feet and not be counted out in a 10 count. But notice the wrap on the right leg of James Storm. That, that vicious shot he took from a 10, that vicious, that, that vicious beat down the triple X game. That's another disadvantage for the Cowboy. Now we witnessed it on impact, and you see how heavily taped that right knee is. Still Storm able to use his strength to overpower prime time. I want to remind you about the best damn sports show. They're going to devote the entire week to professional wrestling as we see AMW now trying to go for the double team move. Let's watch what AMW does. Wow, that's the teamwork right there. Both of these teams are so quick on the tag. They work so well together. And that's what they're going to have to do. And you see right now Storm using his brink, but all the angle being able to land on his. What a oh. Caught him straight up. With that right leg. That time he used the power from the injured right leg to connect with the super kick. You know, you've got to watch this move. Double team. Oh, here they go. They're going for the death set. I can't believe they go this early. Oh, you saw right there. Oh, Prime Time sacrificed himself. He sacrificed his own body to save the fallen angel. That's teamwork. That's teammates. Harris able to drill him with that leg and then takes down Daniels. AMW going to go for the pin here early. He's got it now. We'll see him. The fallen angel can get him up to his feet. The 10 count, as you see right there. Storm pinning Daniels. Here you see referee Andrew Thomas putting in the 10 count. If he doesn't get up to his feet, he's eliminated and he's out of this match. Six. Count going to six. The fallen angel getting to the ropes and getting to his feet. And he is up and still alive in this match. And Storm goes right back to the offensive. You got to. You know you've got the fallen angel really right now. This is a chance. Oh, what a my Overpowered and drove him down back first and tags into the Wildcat Chris Harris. Southpaw measures him. Left arm Larry and takes him down. Oh, he did. He just catches him down. Left arm Wildcat Chris Harris. Go strong. I think he's going to have to be the leader of this group because James Storm has so much on his mind. He's not letting it show right now, but the fallen angel, Chris Daniels, able to get Chris Harris. Let's get, let's get this quick reminder in. Don't miss it. Wednesday, Thursday, FSN, Fox Sports Network, the best damn wrestling event, period, involving the stars of TNA. Check your local listings, but don't miss it. FSN, Fox Sports Net, this upcoming week, Wednesday and Thursday, great TNA action. Oh, here goes the tags right now. It's now Triple X getting their momentum, working together as a team as they got the wild cat on two on one. And you see the pain right there. Look at the team line. Prime time using his strength, throwing the fellow right on top of the wild cat. And you see Daniels getting into the spew of Storm. Oh, I'll tell you what, I mean, I had so much respect for Triple X until about a week ago and, and how they handled themselves. They just they went back to their own ways. They really did. I think they felt like that was the only way that they could get that edge. That they could get that, that a little bit extra on top of AMW and we'll see if it works for You see primetime mount the ropes. We're gonna go for the power flex move there. They got him right here. Let's see what body two, two. Oh, but oh, just a two count. Not 
not going to let him even get to a three count right there. Don, we talked about it earlier during the ring entrances, but let's cover this complex situation again involving AMW and Triple X. It's Larry Zabisco from the championship committee because of injury put team members together, one from Triple X, one from AMW. They were successful both times team owning the tag team title. Harris in prime time and Daniels in storm, but now everything is back to normal. Well, what happened in that situation was it actually turned them back into enemies because every time something happened to Rain, the other would blame the other if it went bad. And you can't have that. You got, you got guys that feel like they're the best part of the group, and it just turns out. But Rain left on Rain right there. But Walt gets for sure that he gets attacked in the storm. Explosive move by Harris. Storm now the legal man. Takes down prime time and then drives Daniels down as well. Great move right there. You see the how great this moment has been carrying such a burden on his mind. Maybe this is a release for him. He's able to take it all out on the big of the ring. What a great move there by the Cowboy Game Star. Tilt the world, head scissors, and again, I'm surprised he can do that move so well. After the right knee injury, power slams, far leg hook, just the two counts. Oh man, right there, you saw five time. Almost get been there, but I'm telling you, Jake Storm is absolutely on fire. Oh! Now, he was going to go for the super kick, but he left himself open. He was vulnerable, and you saw how Daniels took advantage, and he took that injured knee out. Oh, he went right for the leg right there. You might not like it, but it might have been a good move there for Triple X. Did you see the teamwork, and they're going for it again. They're going to try to end it right here. Oh! One, two, oh, oh, man, man. they got it. Got the pin. Great double team move. Triple X scoring the victory, and now we will see if he can answer the 10 count. Look at, oh, look at, definitely favoring the right knee there. Storm, six, did he say? I'm trying to hear Tom. Seven, he's trying to get his leg up. His eight, you see right there? Nine, he gets up to his feet. Somehow, amazingly enough, up at nine. Oh, again, this moment, Angel just crashes the knee, the right knee. The injured knee of James Storm. Referee distracted the chair shot the follow pin. Yes, he gets a three count. Oh, is he gonna be able to answer this 10 count? I don't even know if he can stay in, let alone answer the 10 count. Oh, I don't know if he can. And oh, if he what does, a wicked. If, if he doesn't, he's eliminated and it becomes a two-on-one situation for Triple X. He's trying to get up. That's a nine! No, they said he, he didn't make it! To his he face. didn't make it up. It's eliminated. Storm is out, and now Triple X has the numbers game in their favor. Oh, well, I'll tell you right now, it is two on one, but Wildcat Cruzeros took advantage of the two of them, kind of celebrating a little premature celebration right there. Let's see if the Wildcat can somehow get control. Oh, he stepped out on the Fallen Angel. BME upcoming. Best moonsault ever. He's going to try to make it the last heat standing, and you see it, but oh, took too long. And he thought that the Wildcat was Despite being outnumbered, two on one, off the spear, pin attempt, two, prime time, keep an eye on him, perched up on top. Oh man, you saw right there as he was coming off the top of the rope, looked like he kind of slipped a little bit, but he knew what to do. He kept his momentum going forward, and he caught the wildcat on the head. Now we see Daniels down, prime time was going to go high risk, but the wildcat drove him down to the guard rail. What a leg drop. Here is a beautiful leg drop, too. He's got the pin. Let's see if he can get the 10 count. Now the 10 count employed by Thomas on the fallen angel. Oh, this is really what the Wildcat needs. Oh, he's got to even the score. He's got to get it back to 1-1. That was a vicious blow that Primetime took against the rail. Look at this. Wildcat not waiting. Wildcat goes out to the floor. Ripping oh. up. Oh. To Daniels. Daniels is gone. Daniels, Daniels didn't make it up. He, he looked like he was going to get up in around nine, but then he just went right back down, and he's out. And you saw what you, I mean, what you said, Mike, is that Wildcat Chris Harris didn't even think about Christopher Daniels. He went straight for Bright Guy, who was out trying to make sure he could weaken him to get him back in that ring and finish this off. It is down now to the Wildcat Chris Harris representing America's Most Wanted. And prime time of Triple X with both Storm and the fallen Angel Daniels eliminated. It's now down one on one. It's not last team standing at this point. Yeah. It's who's going to be the last man standing. Good point right there as Wildcat Chris Harris is back in the ring. And Steve trying to get Primetime in there so they can finish this match. But that was a wicked blow that Primetime took to his head against the guardrail.
let's see how it affects him. And Harris trying to regroup as well. Looks like he's doing a little bit the better of it. Prime time making his way back into the ring, however. And Harris is ready with a big left hand. Chris Harris, a person that almost even won the heavyweight championship. A guy who, who at one point brought, not didn't break up, but kind of went on his own from America's Most Wanted. Came just seconds away from winning it all. Now this is his chance to get that glory back. And, Pound for pound, the best athlete in the world. And he was able to power out and avoid the three count that time, even though Harris was able to regroup right in the midst of that power bomb and drive him down to the mat. Go for the pin, but Prime Time still alive. Both men back up to the vertical base, back to their feet. Looks like a suplex attempt here by the Wildcat. Oh, he loves to hold him up in this high vertical for as long as he can. Oh, but, he, but he just couldn't quite oh, his, back oh. went out. his back went out his on him. His back went out. Here comes the pin of the nail. He couldn't quite connect with it. I think, I think when he went for the POD, that Harris's back just gave out on him. It did, and, and, and Harris went down, and it actually kind of threw the momentum of the time off. That's he's the man. I mean, they're, they're going with nothing but emotion right now. It really has become a, a match of attrition at this point. Who's going to be able to fight through the, the, the pain and the, the prime time out on the floor? Harris in the ring. What's he got? Oh, he's got a chair right there in his hands. He's pulling it out of the stands. And you see right here, prime time. Oh, wait a minute. He pushes referee Andy Stevens away as he's going to try to finish off the walk at Chris Harris. He's got a steel chair, prime time measuring it's him. Personal. Oh, but he kicks it just in time. Wildcat, picks him up. Look out! It comes the catatonic, and he hits it right oh, on the top. The back of his head oh, broke the steel chair. Oh, but he's oh, how in the world did he kick out of that? Did he kick out? Did he kick out? No, he got a free count. We'll see if prime time can get to his feet. Referee Thomas putting in the 10 count. Is he going to be able to get up after taking that catatonic across the steel chair? Nine. Ten. That's it. It's ten. He can't get up. I tell you, that was a wicked shot he took with the catatonic. AMW wins it. There is the last man standing. Oh, God. Daniel's down with a chair shot. Can't stand the fact that AMW has won the match. He's got handcuffs. And Chris Harris is the last man standing. And you see right there, James Storm trying to come in to come to his partner day. And this battle just continues right here. All four men now back in the battle, back in the action. As we see Daniels and Storm. And now Daniels has got the chair. Oh, vicious. What a shot right there by Daniels. Vicious, violent shot with the chair. Here he's got the handcuffs. Locking them in place around the wrist of James Storm. Oh, you can see a triple X. They, it's almost like they don't care that they lost the men. They just want to exact any kind of pain, any kind of damage they can to America's most wanted. And now they, they've taken the handcuffs and they, they've locked AMW together. They're absolutely defenseless here. Oh, there's nothing they can do. Oh, what a shot right there. By the fallen angel, Christopher Daniels. Oh, another wicked shot to the look back. At, look at how the chair was dead. In. Oh, this is wrong. Oh, we need some help out here. Critically. We need someone to get out here and, and stop this triple X machine. Heavy D, head of security, Don Harris. Finally. He's, they... God, he's had his hands full tonight, hasn't he? Well, you know these guys are winded, so this is a good situation for security to take control right here. Heavy D, like you said, having to work on Shane Douglas earlier at the limo. Now coming in here to try to remove Triple X from the building. I think it's safe uh, to say here, AMW are. really in trouble after the Triple X attack. Let's send it to Scott Hudson with the NWA World's Champ, Jeff Jarrett. It's all come down to this. Victory Road has come to its conclusion, and we are ready for the big two. Who is going to be the new DOA, and who will emerge from Victory Road with the NWA World Heavyweight Championship? It doesn't get any bigger than this. A ladder in the ring, the belt suspended high above the ring here in Orlando. The enigmatic, charismatic Jeff Hardy to take on the King of the Mountain, Jeff Jarrett. And champ, let me ask you this.
what is on your mind as we get ready for the end of Victory Road. Scott Hudson, it's real simple. There's only one thing on my mind, and that's climbing that ladder and getting my NWA World Heavyweight title back around my waist. That's it. Jeff Hardy, it's this simple. No Nash, no hope, no title. That's our main event, but right now I want to send it to Mike Tanay. He's ready to announce the winner of DOA Decision 2004. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a very important announcement to make. It was up to you. You had the power to decide who would be the boss here in TNA. You voted at our website, TNAWrestling.com, and I have the results. By a margin of 55.6% to 44.4%, let me introduce to you the new NWA Director of Authority, the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. Director of Authority! As you see Vince Russo right there, taking the hand of Larry Zabisco, of course, one of the members of the championship committee, and Dusty Rhodes walking around the ring enjoying his celebration. The crowd spoke. They voted for the legend. They voted for the man that they wanted to be in charge. They wanted to be the new Director of Authority. The American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. Congratulations, Dream. The people have spoken. This is your stage. Hello, America. How are you tonight, huh? What a night. What a night. When we, two and a half to three years ago, started here, we waited on this night. We wanted this night to come. This night has, has come, and what a great night it has been. First of all, walking down this ramp, this kid right here said, hey, you need to settle this thing with Triple X and with America Most Wanted. So I'll tell you what, on December the 5th, on our next pay-per-view, I'm going to put them in a six-sided Cage match, six sides of steel, right here. Steel, yes, again. This week, I'll be heading tomorrow to Los Angeles, California, to oversee the best damn sports show as they get ready for two hot days of nothing but total non-stop action. Tonight, this industry has been revolutionized. Tonight, there is a new dog on the hunt. And I guarantee you, way up north there, they're all glued to their TVs, and they're saying, you know what? We got a fight on our hands. And they are TNA. And they are the guys in the back. Yes. Let me hear it. Get it out. Let them hear it. The American Dream getting this crowd fired up. I'm going to do what you want done. And Larry Zabisco, Terry Funk, Harlem Race. Let me tell you something. It's going to be the people's way, the boys in the back's way, or my way, or the highway. Laying down the law. We said we were going to raise the ball. Ladder match for the NWA World's Heavyweight title. 
Brown, the man of Fred Whip. You hear him chanting for Jeff Hardy, Dusty, so instrumental in bringing him to TNA. has been the showcase of insanity. Hardy has made it his specialty, showing no fear. For NWA World Champion Jeff Jarrett, the latter represents his climb to the top. For one man, a climb to the top in search of his first major singles title championship reign. For the other, solidify his reign as one of the most dominant champions in the 50-plus year history of the NWA World Championship. Jarrett has enlisted the services of Scott Hall to be in his corner, while Hardy has the backing of Hall's longtime ally, Kevin Nash. And Jeff, let me give you a little bit of advice about Kevin Nash. When the chips are down, he'll be the first one at the window to cash in. Now, Hardy, I've given you global warning. Planet Jarrett, a small asteroid in Universe Hardy. Hardy goes up, Jarrett goes down. The Neon Space Cadet decided to land on Planet Jarrett. Heavyweight title, 
It's time for the ladder match with Hardy and Jarrett to the tail of the tape. You see how even they are in terms of height. Weight advantage goes to Jarrett as well as the experienced edge. Let's break it down now with the bullet points. It was September 8th, the date with fate, when Jared and his guitar went in controversial fashion two months later, the return match. Dusty Rhodes offered to up the ante, was accepted by Jared. The latter could be more than the equalizer. It could be the difference maker. X factors in this matchup, Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. Yes, Scott Hall in the corner of Jeff Jarrett. Kevin Nash scheduled to be in Jeff Hardy's corner, but Kevin Nash has not been seen all day. And here comes the challenge. Since arriving in TNA as wrestling's hottest free agent fighter, Jeff Hardy has been in the middle of the NWA World title picture. The charismatic enigma, originally recruited, strongly supported by the new DOA Dusty Rhodes, looks to add the NWA World Heavyweight Championship to a resume that includes the WWE Intercontinental title after he defeated Triple H and multiple reigns as tag team champion with his brother Matt. You remember that this week on Impact, Hardy came back from two brutal beatings at the hands of Jared. He shockingly pinned the world's champ at the end of a tag match. Jared's first pinfall loss in six months. He proved to himself and Jared he can do it and he's bringing the ladder. He sure is, and I'm telling you what, he is fucked up. He's been waiting for this. He called the match. A match that he's a special, a specialist in. A match that he wanted. The problem is... He is the ruler of Planet Jarrett and the reigning World Heavyweight Champion. The three NWA titles, the crowning achievement in a career that includes seven WWE Intercontinental Championships, four WCW World Title Reigns. Tonight at Victory Road, that NWA title belt will literally be hanging in the balance. High above the six-sided ring, the questions we're about to answer. Will Jarrett's pride and ego cost him that championship? Because he agreed to a ladder match, the type of bout that made the challenge of Jeff Hardy famous. Even though it's a match that Jeff Hardy wanted, it's not a match that Jarrett's a stranger to. As we saw him climb the ladder in that first ever King of the Mountain match, thus getting the moniker King of the Mountain. I'll tell you something, it's going to come down to the experience of Jarrett for the high flying, death defying abs of Jeff Hardy. Let's go to our ring announcer, Jeremy Borash, for the official introduction to the main event. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall and is a ladder match for the NWA Heavyweight Championship of the World. When the bell rings, the man in charge, TNA senior official, Mr. Rudy Charles. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Universal Studios at Universal Orlando Resort, it's time for your Victory Road main event of the evening. Look at the daredevil Hardy. Facing, first of all, the challenge. Outside of the ring to my right, he weighs in at 224 pounds. From Cameron, North Carolina. He is the number one contender for the NWA Heavyweight Championship of the World. He is the charismatic enigma. Introducing from Hendersonville, Tennessee, he weighed in this morning at 238 pounds and is the current reigning and defending NWA heavyweight champion of the world. He is the king of the mountain, Jeff. Jeff. Now. He doesn't want to wait. He's taking it 
Hardy. And he doesn't wait. Jarrett jump starts the match and the attack, but Hardy's prepared for it. And look at Hardy fight back. Yeah, you know what? It's almost like you can feel that Jeff Hardy is so much better prepared this time than he was on the date of fate. It's a match that he wants. It's on his ground. And it's a situation where he feels like he's going to be in control and he has the advantage. And Jarrett taking the ladder, positioning it in the corner. And now Jeff Hardy rising face first into the corner turnbuckle. The champion going to position another ladder. Has that set up against Turnbuckles on the opposite side? Oh, 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 man. You know, we've mentioned it, Don, for weeks, the experience that Hardy has in these ladder matches. And you see here as he drives Jarrett back first into both ladders. Jeff Hardy knew what he was doing. He brought the ladders into play right from the beginning. Before the introduction, right while they were going on, he brought those ladders into the ring. And you saw why, so they can be in play right from the start. One of the questions that we had in terms of Jeff Jarrett and Scott Hall. Would, would Jeff Jarrett be getting advice from Scott Hall about the ladder matches? And Paul mentioned it earlier. As we see Hardy standing up, drop kick. Caught Jarrett in the corner. What a move right there. He had to sacrifice his body. He climbed up the ladder, got the kick, forced the ladder into the gut right there of the, of the team, Jeff Jarrett. But it also cost Jeff Hardy. He took the wicked rope to the ground, but Hardy gets up first. And Jeff Jarrett on his hands and knees. And Hardy takes Jarrett face first, throws him so that his chest goes directly into the steel ladder. I'll tell you what, look at this. Jeff Hardy's showing all of uh -oh. his expertise right here as he just... Jarrett just did no man's land here as... Oh, Hardy takes the ladder up. repeatedly driving across the lower back. Shot after shot after shot right there with the back of Jeff Jarrett. You can uh -oh. see right here that Jeff Hardy's prepared for this. He has planned it in his head. He's mapped it out. He's got his strategy down, and it's going just textbook right now for him. You know, I expected Hardy, because of his daredevil high-risk style, to really be in the, in the advantage here in this ladder match, but he's actually been using the ladder as a weapon. I've never seen this before right here at DNA, and he's using it right there. You see the beat shape, and he's got Jared in it. And look at this. He's just using it to his advantage, applying the pressure. Oh, what's he doing right here? Oh, look at that. Just oh. squeezing it into the gun. Look at the pain. He's just squeezing the life and the breath out of Jared here. Using both sides of the ladder against oh. the rib cage of Jared. Oh, and then he put the kick right to the head. Drop kick right into the face. Of course, we've been talking about how Kevin Nash conspicuous by his absence, but Scott Hall has not come out to be in the corner of Jared either. We know that Scott Hall is here, but I think it's a situation where... Jeff Jarrett wanted to be on his own out there in the ring. I don't think he wanted anybody to think he had any kind of an advantage. But right now, he probably wishes Scott Hall to come out here and get him out of this predicament because Jeff Hardy is in total control. Hardy making his way up the ladder. The NWA World's Heavyweight title belt hanging high above the six-sided ring. But Jarrett, you can see, on the defensive, but doing quite well in between the ladder as he stops Hardy from climbing up. Yeah, Jeff Jarrett, I'll tell you what, it's amazing the pain that he just went through right there, but so much is at stake right here. This is the biggest night in TNA history, and you've just got to suck it up. You've got to do whatever it takes to come out on top. We saw that great video package at the top of this broadcast about these wrestlers putting their bodies on the line, and that's exactly what Hardy and Jarrett are doing. That's what Triple X and AMW did earlier. We received word that Primetime took that catatonic to, on the chair, the blow to the head. Doesn't remember anything about the match, Primetime is going to be hospitalized tonight. That shows you what these wrestlers put at stake Oh, man, you saw right there as Jeff Hardy went all the way to the ground right there and caught his leg. I wouldn't have his foot. You know, it was such a wicked hit right there to Primetime. He was, he was almost like, instead of kicking out, I think he was kind of convulsing. It was weird. And just like Triple X and AMW, Jarrett and Hardy also put their lives on the line here as Jarrett takes this steel ladder and just drives it across the leg of Hardy. When you've got weapons like these ladders in the ring, Mike, the momentum can change in a hurry. All it takes is one vicious blow to the head, one vicious blow to the body to knock the breath out of you. This is what's happened right now is Jeff Jarrett has taken total command of the match. Earlier it was Jarrett who had the win taken out of him, but now after repeated blows to the body with the ladder, we see that Hardy's in trouble, and now Jarrett, he's got that ladder positioned 
half on the ring apron and half on the steel guardrail. Oh man, Jeff Jarrett now showing his expertise. So look at this as he just throws Hardy on top of it. There's no game to the ladder because of the steel rails that are resting on. And he does it again! Jeff Jarrett setting him up right there. There's no game. It's like just throwing somebody on the floor. Jarrett, the front suplex as Hardy's ribs crash against the ladder. Now Jarrett goes in back into the ring. NWA World Heavyweight Champion Jarrett looking to inflict more punishment. Dragging the ladder back in. Hardy trying to mount a comeback, but just when it seems as if he might, Jarrett connects again with the ladder to the ribs. Oh, those exposed ribs again. Nice shot right there to the ribs by Jarrett. Jarrett right now also had a game plan, and he's usually kind of a, a strength approach. Not trying to be fair. Oh, my God. He's just using that ladder like it's a battering ram. And he just slammed Jeff Hardy to the floor. Referee went down as well. Both Hardy and the referee in a heap on the arena floor. You know, we wondered if Jarrett was going to get any advice, any strategy from Scott Hall. Famous for that WrestleMania 10 ladder match with Shawn Michaels. And it looks like Scott Hall has provided Jarrett with the advice that he needs here against Hardy. Oh, and you know what? you got to go to somebody who's been there before, an expert. And Scott Hall is one who's been in many of these matches. And look at this right now. Jeff Hardy just took another face shot right to the ladder, right to the... How many, the more, how many the more of those can he take? Oh, you can't. Your body is not is not made to take that kind of punishment. You physically can't take it, Mike. Yeah, we saw that earlier with prime time. Now we're seeing it here with Hardy. As we see Jarrett going to climb up the ladder. He's just a couple of rungs away from, oh, from having contact with that title belt. Oh, can he try to read the ladder's a little wobbly, and he sees Hardy on the back of his eye. And there goes Hardy, and he kicks the feet right under Jarrett and knocks him down. It was a desperation move by Hardy. It was really all that he could do at that point. Jarrett was just inches away from tearing down the title belt, and Hardy swung with a drop kick, made contact with the ladder, both men down. I'm going to tell you something, Mike. If that ladder had been more sporty, Jim Jarrett would have the belt right now. You could see the ladder was wobbling, and Jeff Jarrett could not keep control. He knew that at the wrong move, the ladder could fall over, and then he saw Hardy out of the back of his eyes, and that's all it took. And there it was, and how Hardy has the advantage. Jarrett just trying to use the ring ropes to get to his feet as Hardy takes the ladder, slams it down, turns his attention back to the champion. Couple shots to the side of the head. By Hardy, has Jarrett really could take him and scoop him up? Oh, look at Jarrett. I don't know how you can oh, him. God. To pick up somebody almost 250 pounds up for everything you've gone through. But Hardy does, and now he's driving the foot into the chest and the stomach of Jeff Jarrett. Now what's he going to do? Dropped him back first across the ladder. And now Hardy going to go high risk off the top. Oh, he swat times him right on top of the ladder. Wow. As you see the contact made, you see Hardy may have been hurt as well. Can he regroup? What a swan time by Hardy. I'm going to tell you, both these guys right now are just racking in pain. They're feeling it. Every part of their body hurts. And well, coming right down here beside us. Here comes Scott it's Hall. Scott Hall. Scott Hall, the man scheduled to be in the corner of Jeff Jarrett. Well, and Scott Hall getting in the ring. Well, he is in his corner. And there he goes. Is he going to go for the edge? He's got He's got him up. Oh, and just throws him down. He hit the edge. As Jeff Jarrett is still laying down on his belly. Here comes security. Heavy D, Don Harrison. Going to try and escort Scott Hall away from ring. There's one thing about getting some support, but coming in there and, and doing what he's done is too much. Oh, now he's so look at this. Cross my heart up to die. He's going to sit down right there. Oh, man. Oh, well, we, we had a feeling that Scott Hall would become a factor in this match. And, you know, by the, by the same token, Kevin Nash has been a factor as well because he isn't here to be in Hardy's corner. That's exactly right. Jeff Hardy now realizes he's on an island. Jeff Hardy now knows that Scott Hall is at ringside and that he is a man by himself. I mean, he knows he also has to finish Derek Quinn. Takes the chair. Derek still has it moved. What a leg drop by Hardy. Using that steel chair to the back for extra impact. Now Hardy, what's he going to do? Some kind of a game plan, some kind of a strategy here involving the ladder. I'll tell you what, this guy has shown some intestinal fortitude. Jeff Hardy has been absolutely magnificent. He called for this match for a reason. And you know that takes guts to call for a match of this sort because you know what you're going to go through yourself. 
but if it gives you the right edge, if it gives you the chance to win the belt, because it is the NWA World Championship belt, you gotta do what you gotta do. And it could prove to be the difference maker in allowing Jeff Hardy to become world champ. Now Jarrett positioning Hardy up on the top rope. You hear the fans here at Universal Studios in Orlando. You hear the chance for Hardy. You hear what? Oh, oh my God! Did you see that? You gotta be kidding me! Did you see that? Oh, that was wicked! Hardy set it up like a catapult, and he catapulted right into the chin in the face of Jarrett. The ladder came up. Jared never saw it coming. Is there any way that could be seen it? Oh, it was so brutal. You can see the concern of the Look at this. Eyes. Check this out. Oh, oh my God. Oh, God. Wow. Great shot, guys. You can see how dangerous this is. Oh. Is that just... The, po oh. the, the point has never been driven home more. How these athletes are putting their bodies on the line here. As you see now, Jared, though, still able to get up. Jared on one side, Hardy on the opposite side. Now Jared trying to fight off. Hardy had maybe a wrong lead, but now Jared in the lead as they try and climb and make their way up to tear down the title. And in the left-hand corner of your screen, you see the belt hanging, suspended, and man, Jeff Hardy just tried to get Jared face first into the mat. Took him by the back of the head and face jammed him from the top of the ladder. He's paid as he is. Oh, we got, we got to 
see this again. Look at this. And I'm telling you, Scott Hall's still trapped underneath it. Watch this. Oh, God. And Scott Hall is still trapped underneath it. Now, both Jarrett and Hardy amazingly have found their way back into the ring. Both men have ladders. One climbing up one ladder, one climbing up the other. Who's it going to be? This is unbelievable. Whoever can get to the belt, and I can't tell. It looks like Hardy might be closer, but from this angle. Well, it's so even here. It's, it, it, I don't know that there is any advantage. Don, at this point, it's pretty much who stays on the ladder, I think, that's going to have the edge. Oh, they're slugging it out, and they're just... Oh, what a kick right there by Hardy. Right when it counts. He knows he's got two. Jeff Hardy, what's he going to do? Trying to power bomb, but it was a smart move by Jarrett. Jarrett had enough sense and enough strength to maintain his grip on the ladder, to hold on. And when Hardy went for the power bomb, Jarrett did not go over with him, crashing down to the mat. Great move by the champion to block that attempt by Hardy, who again has got the ladder in place. And here you see right now Jeff Hardy going for it again and again. From Jarrett trying to hold on, but he couldn't. As Hardy breaks into the mat, tried a second time, went back to the well, and again, Jarrett blocked the powerbomb attempt. These guys, I don't know how they have anything left. I don't know. Die, they have die, an die. ambulance waiting outside because these guys are going to have broken bones over their body. Now, Hardy rolls Jarrett back inside the six-sided ring. Hardy making his way towards the ladder. Decides to... Stop Jarrett several times to weaken it. Ladders on top of Jarrett while Hardy's gonna climb. Wait a minute, Scott Hall back into the ring. Scott Hall with a steel chair. How many times? Oh, what a nice shot there by Hardy. Hardy fought him off again. This guy has been so resilient. Uh, and a two-on-one situation for much of this match. Oh, and he nails him, and Scott Hall paid the price. He's down. Twist of fate by Hardy on Hall. Now Hardy going outside. Oh, he just for good measure, a little spot, Donald Scott Hall. And again, you hate to see him distracted, but he's got to do it. He's got to take Hall out of the picture so that he can climb the ladder. Oh, no. Now Jarrett, what does he have? Does he have the guitar? Jeff Jarrett's got the guitar in hand. Hardy, though, kicks him away. Now Jarrett's got a chair. And, oh, oh, he catches him in the back. He just, he just he waffled him with that chair shot. Jared, what's he going to do? Is he going to go for it right here? This is his chance. Jared. He's got the guitar in hand to use as a weapon if Hardy tries to interfere. Always one step ahead, the world's champion. What? what? Jared! Do you know who it is? What the hell is this? He's here! He can let Jeff Hardy down! You see Hardy. Wait a minute. He just handed one to Scott Hall. Jared knows he's in trouble. But no. They crash down. They crash him. And another one. And it's all going to be Jeff Jarrett. Huh. Kevin Nash turned on Hardy. And now Jarrett. He's got his hands on the title. And he holds the down. Jeff Jarrett retains the NWA World's Heavyweight title. Thanks to Scott Hall and thanks to Kevin Nash, the outsiders were the difference maker, not the latter. I can't believe what I just see. Kevin Nash and Scott Hall played us. They played everybody. There never was any friction between the two of them. You know, I was wondering why Jeff Hardy was green in the match. And then somebody pointed out the fact he was green with envy because he must have been standing next to me earlier today at the urinal. Oh, yeah, it's us.
That's us. We're back. Let me tell you something. The things we do, we take over. We take all the money. So you guys living in that one-bedroom apartment in the back with your two kids on the couch, thinking someday you're gonna have money to buy a house, ain't gonna happen. So if there's anybody in the back with a sack, don't sing it, bring it. Open challenge to the locker room? Oh, they've come in. Not only have they come in, they've challenged him. Look who's answering the call. He knows he's gonna carry the torch. AJ Styles, but the numbers, come on, AJ. The phenomenal one. He's not, he's not, he's not worried about numbers. Springboard double clothesline. Here's a Gary for Hall. Spin kick for Jarrett. Kevin Nash saying no. Now he's getting uh -oh. prepared. Kevin Nash saying yes. Look at this right here. But AJ too quick. Nash just get it all. Wow, great move by AJ. What a drop kick by Styles. Right hand rocks Hall. Move to the midsection for Jared. He's going to clash Jared. Oh, but the move by Kevin Nash drills it. Here comes the crew. Conan. Conan hits the ring. Here comes oh, the crew killings. Here comes B2. James the crew is hit the ring. Finally, there's fat wrestlers from the back that are going to even things up. BG James oh, cut off by Nash. Oh man, Kevin Nash uh -oh. got BG. Here it comes, Jackknife. Oh, oh yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What's going on? What's this? Could, could this? Could, who was in that limo? Shane Douglas was trying to find out. Shane Douglas was trying to find out. Savage is in victory mode.